my mother saw a good in me. And I wanted to make my mama happy. Just imagine rearing nine living children in an indigenous society without health services, lack of food, problems, crime. It was difficult for my parents. And so my mother thought that at least one of us will be able to stand out when they are gone to fend for the others. I have vowed to do that, and I've been doing that. I, I'm not only fending for my mother's children. I fend for my tribe. I fend for my country. And therefore, I do not relent to continue to stand as long as there is life in me to do what I can to bring peace and justice to my land. I want to take this time to tell you thank you. As I have said, introducing myself, I come from a tribal element called Ketiebo, a sub-tribe of the Grebo people, K-I-T-E-A-B-O. By record, we are warriors. We are a very small tribe, highly conservative, but we have vast land mass among bigger tribes surrounding us. My family, the Kolipo family, we are the Bodios from time immemorial. We go out when the die were cast, and some family members were needed to establish our tribe where we are now. It was the Kolipo family that came forward and made the supreme sacrifice. So I come from a family of leaders. My mother is the niece of the chairman of the Trui Party, Parma Chief Tie, Solo Tie. I remember sitting between his knees when he is judging and administering transparent justice of country before coming to school. And one day he told my father upon his visitation, I grew with my aunt. As I told you, my mother had 13 births. And this is how they rear us. When mama is soon pregnant and you are just walking, Auntie Raju will come and carry you to her. She didn't have any children. And the one that was before you, they will bring him back. Because then he's able to go and get water and do other things. And so I spent time in my mother's home, and I was able to be in his town, Solo Blue, and I saw him dispensing justice. So I got interested in government. My mother visited me, or my father did. And Parma Chief T.A. told my father, take care of he went for me to go to school. So the, the chief told my father, take care of this boy. Now you mon come and you clever you la. It is Dwaya. This your son is the son of all your sons. So take care of him. And my father brought me, sent me to school. I went to Uncle Isaac. Peace be to his arches in Harper City. He was a watchman in one of the business shipping companies in Harper. And uh, so I stayed with him, we were watching. Uh, he attended the St. Teresa School, the Catholic School there, and I was in the house when he's not there. I started my school. And I did not go back until I got my college degree from America. Because of what my mother blessed me with, I don't really, I didn't go through trouble about finding money. And I was not ashamed of my situation. And so, 
I parlayed well with all my equals. In school, yeah, I was not too brilliant, but I was sensible and an average student. I was aware of the subject matter and could relate to it when I was asked. And so, I came to Monrovia. My cousin, Tia, who was the son of late Parma Chief Tia, my, my mother's uncle, was taken by Tuckman to come here to school. I was in Plevo at the time. And so, when Parma Chief Tia died, Uncle Tia, as I call him, came from Morovia on the LNA plane to attend his father's funeral. And Uncle Tia was dressed beautifully. In those days, he had on his honor clothes, white, and had on this nylon shirt. And he attracted me beautifully. So I wanted to come to Morovia. So anyway, I was in seven, in the seventh grade, the sixth grade. So after he left, President Tuckman went to Kepamas with a yacht. And I wrote him I wanted to come to Morovia to go to school. But I never got answer. But a man who was on the delegation of the president, Thomas R. Lane, he was an accountant, a Togolese, with a Togolese father, he settled in our district called Nyanyake. Uh, one morning, uh, every morning while the president was visiting, I was in their house, in the late A. Dash, uh, Wilson's house. Uh, he would come outside looking for the boys in the house to do something. But I, since I was not, I was just there sleeping with Cousin Samuel. So I would be on the porch in the morning. Then he would, he would look around, then say, good morning, sir. He said, he said, yeah, you, why are you at? I gave him my name. I spoke good English, and he was impressed. I said, my name is Joe Sampson. And he said, OK, will you please give me some money? I said, yes, I will go and bring the water. So we did that for some monies, some days. Then he asked me, he said, you say you, want, you wrote the president. Have you gotten the answer? I said, no, sir. He said, all right, uh, only president you want to carry Monrovia? I said, I said, no, if, if I can get to Monrovia to go to school. He said, all right, I will carry you. So Thomas Allen brought me in a yacht. It was at a time when President Barclay died, and President Tuckman did not travel in a yacht to come back, but he came with LNA, the plane. So we got on a yacht, and we came here. We landed here at the port. I live with... Thomas R. Lane, his family, I attended this place you used to call Monkey Camp, uh, Moravia College, which is now the, uh, the African Methodist University there. I went to school there, and uh, I, my mother, stepmother, I was living with Thomas R. Lane's uh, wife, and she was not too receptive about me. For some reason, she said I was frisky. Uh, but I was not frisky, but I was very committed to my school business. I did not like people sending for me when I'm in class. And people thinking my, uh, un un underestimated my, my commitment for my school. And so I had a problem with her. She had a problem with me. Anyway, then I looked, I looked to I looked to, I used to help one of my friends who was a police officer living with the late Councillor Chesson, Joe Chesson, Joseph Chesson. So I said, uh, you know, Jacob, I'm looking for somebody to live with, man. The place where I live in, in uh, right there on uh, Ken Johnson Road, the woman there giving me a hard time. She would call me out of class and all that kind of thing. And, and on a day we having class, then Monday morning, then she said, I'm going to wash clothes. I don't have problem washing clothes. I'm able to wash clothes. But she would do it on a school day, on, on, on Saturday and other days. She would want me to do different things. 
Then on, on Monday morning, when we were supposed to go to school, then she said, she dished out a whole lot of clothes from the closet and said, I'm going to wash it. So Joga Pro said, okay. He talked to Councillor Chesson, who was the Attorney General, for me to st stay there. So they invited me. Chesson invited me that, that afternoon, and I went there. He asked for my name. Mommy was sitting there, Mrs. Chesson, Leona Chesson, and he asked me a question. And I answered with clean English. I was not just an ordinary country boy who came to school. I was an enlightened country boy. So the woman said, eh, you know plenty of. So he, he speak good English. That's what she said. Mommy started having confidence in me the very day she met me. We call her Mommy. Then, Councillor Chesson said, so you told Jigopko you want to stay here? I said, yes, sir. He said, OK. If you steal, I will put you in the post stocky. I will lock you up. Before I got there, the boys that were living with Chesson stole the police guns that he, was, he, has, he stored in his house uh, for safety. And so he was very concerned about stealing. So he told me, if you steal, I'll put him in jail. I said, all right, sir. So he said, you can go and bring your things. He called Jacob Cole. He said, yeah, take the car. Let him go to the place. Tell the people I, I, I will want for him to stay with me. I said, OK. Jacob Cole went with me in a black car. So you see, I started riding a black car a long time from here. So we went down to Camp Johnson Road. Luckily, Thomas Ireland was there, and Mrs. Ireland was there. Both of them were there. And Jacob Cole told him that uh, Honorable Chesson had uh, asked him to stay with him, and he accepted me. But he didn't want to take me from here unless he informed them. So I said, OK. But Joe, if you want to go, you couldn't tell me. I will find you somebody. That's why he said I didn't say anything. I picked up my thing, and I went to Chesson. I went right here on Ashmont Street, that old house. Uh, somebody, people not there, and I was a frame house had upstairs and downstairs. That's where I went to school. The year I got in Chesson House, the year after that, I was finishing an elementary school. We took the Tuckman Scholastic Test, and I became second in math and second in English. So I got a scholarship. It was time for me to go to B, I got a scholarship to go to BWI for four years. Uh, my stepfather, Anthony General Joseph Chesson, had gone to, along with uh, Foreign Minister, Secretary of State Grime, had gone to France. They were there for six months negotiating the boundary between Liberia and Guinea. So I went to school that morning. Uh, Chesson was not disposed for me to accept the scholarship. He wanted me to stay here in Monrovia and attend the, the laboratory high, you know, the high school in the University of Liberia. But I didn't want to do that. I wanted to go to school uh, in, in Kipa. So mommy made a decision in the absence of uh, Pa Chesson that uh, I should go on to BWI since I got a scholarship. So I went there on BWI. On BWI, I did well in school. I was not a brilliant student, but I, I, I passed my lessons, and I was well known among my friends. The teachers knew me. I was a student leader. I was president of the junior class, and I was chairman of the sanitary committee on BWI. During my tenure, I used to tell seniors, if you don't clean your thing, you will not go to school. So people got to know me. And I liked being among people and active. I finished high school, I came. Mommy granted me a scholarship to go abroad. She sent me to University of North Carolina, called the North Carolina Central School, Law School. North Carolina Central University, and then I have the North Carolina Central Law School. I went there. She said, I will pay you away for one semester. I know the second semester you will be able to put yourself through school. The thing to do when you get there, they got a dining hall there. You can work in the dining hall. 
you could work in the library of the university, you could be part of the cleaning in the university and be cutting grass, or a maintenance man in the dormitory. That will help to pay for your tuition. I say, yes, man. She paid my way. It was $400 to go to America in those days. And I got to New York. When I got to New York, I took a bus and went on to North Carolina, Durham. And I started my school. My tuition was paid, and so I didn't have any problem. They gave me a space in dormitory, and I was there. I passed my initial test. The second semester, I, uh, I didn't have any tuition. I went to the office and told them that I didn't have tuition, but I wanted to be in school. So they say that there was a man called Philip Stokes. He made available a certain amount of money from his estate in New York City that if Africans go to America, any black man, who, youth, who didn't have money and wanted to be in school, that person, could, they could take money from his estate to, to finance the education. So I went through school on the scholarship of Philip Stokes Fund from New York City. And all my, that's for my tuition, books, but my bowl and room, that is where I slept. And I work in the kitchen, in the dining hall. First of all, I work in the kitchen. I help the cook to cook the university students food. And from there, then they send me to the pantry. I was responsible for people, juniors, who were uh, uh, washing dishes, making the plate ready. I and mean, it was an industry when they turned to eat, thousands of students. Of course, there were plenty of girls, seven girls to one boy. We were about 7,000 students, black. You see, it's part of one, one, one black and white boys, uh, 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 you know, white boys, black women and white girls and boys in our school. At the time, Mountain Dew King was raving America for reform. And so they tried to integrate the school. So I work in the library in, in, the, in the dining hall. I like working to the dining hall because I like to drink plenty of milk. So it was enjoyable, it was, not a, 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 it was not a labor for me. I go to the dining hall, I ate plenty, and uh, you know, I came from a home where food was hard to find, so you give me plenty of food, you know I will eat it. So I enjoy myself there working in the dining hall. When I got to be in the second year, I got a job in the library. I work in the library, so I'm a, a, a devout librarian. But I didn't like packing books and checking people how many books they took and when they brought it. I didn't think it was a good endeavor for me. So I didn't go into library science. At a, at a junior class, I made an application to go to the NCC Law School. I went and took the test. You do take the test in those days in the junior class. So I was able to pass. Then uh, they call it aptitude test, law aptitude test. Uh, after uh, our senior year, I got a major in the school. I went to school, president of the student body from Africa. Uh, we wrote, I took, participated in the law review writing. I wrote my article, I think it was republished in the law school here. Uh, in fact, I'm beginning to think that I think I'll go in the law school and start teaching. I just forget. Okay, I'll do that. Uh, so I wrote an article in the law journal. I haven't seen the law journal for a long time. So I think when I go start teaching, I'll begin to, I'll be the editor of that law journal so we can have one more here. Because when I came from school, we had one. And I published something on land ownership and use in Africa. And so I, I had information about the problem now that they're having in Zimbabwe, where most of the arable land uh, that taken by the settlers, the Indians, I mean the, the white folks that took over uh, Zimbabwe and many parts of Africa. And how here, the indigenous land, we don't have any land anymore. Our government declared that the land was for government and that they can take it, misappropriate it, and do anything with it, you just have to move. And so I wrote an article on that. So you see, from the beginning, I've been very active. All right, I finished college, I came home. I didn't uh, uh, want really, I wanted to be a lawyer. 
and I, I didn't want to since I didn't want to work just anywhere. So I wrote my name. I went to Daily Listener, the newspaper in town at the time, and published an advertisement and told them that I was a law student, I mean a graduate from this school and I want a job. Well, the Daily Listener published an article and put my picture to the, to the bottom of my story. I didn't like that. My story, my picture was supposed to be to the top of the story, not to the bottom of it. I didn't like it. He put my picture all the way to the last, to the last of the page. Well, if people look up, they don't look down. I didn't like that. Anyway, so I later on got I wrote President Tuckman to be to work in the Ministry of uh, uh, Foreign Affairs, they call it, State Department in those days. He said they had a position there. So I wrote President Tuckman. Uh, I, the answer was not forthcoming. So Oliver Bright right here, Simpson and, and Simpson Law Firm, Simpson and Bright Law Firm, they asked me. I went there looking for a job, and they gave me a job. So I started my practice right on the honor justice department. There I practiced law, and then, I mean, later on, uh, Secretary Graham gave me a, a job and wanted me to come and work in the State Department as the legal counsel. In those days, the State Department legal counsel was equivalent to that of a Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs. But when I got there, Tokmo applied, I mean, wrote the letter appointing me. I got a copy of it. But Graham did not give me the job. Graham gave the job to my friend Henry Ree Cooper, who was his cousin. I didn't like that. Okay, because Henry Ree Cooper had applied, and of course there was a rift between the Cooper family and the Tuckman in the, some election of the True Party. And so they didn't answer Henry Cooper, but when they answered me, they appointed me, I got a copy of the letter, and then they called me there, but when I went there, I didn't get the job. Instead, they made me uh, economic officers at the ministry department, I mean state department. I worked there for some time. Uh, I, I didn't know, I didn't want to be an economist. So I got another job with one Jones at Ministry of Commerce Industry uh, down there on Camp Johnson Road. And I worked there for some time. All right. Then uh, in 1975, uh, Senator Conway of Grand Jeta County passed. He was representing Lower Grand Jeta, which is a gravel belt. Upper Grand Jeta is the crown belt. He was living, uh, he, was, he died. So I decided to run for Senate, for the Senate. And I wrote, uh, well, one of the reasons why I left to run for office was this. I went to uh, the Ministry of Lands and Mines, one of the legal counsel, and they were providing more money than in Justice Department. And even when I was in Justice Department, uh, during Tormo, Tor President Torbo uh, uh, administration, I was prepared when Steve Torbo decided, Minister of Finance decided to uh, do the uh, review of concessions agreement, Firestone, Lamco, and the others. Then the, in those days, the timber company was beginning to come. I worked with the concession secretary and Minister of Finance as a lawyer to review. But when time came to have meeting on a high level, Simpson will take a different person, Clarence Simpson. He will not take me. I will in charge of concession review. He will not take me. He will take somebody else to go to a meeting. I think he was boycotting me. I didn't like that. All right. So I decided then I will not, I, I, I'm not going to be working. I can't do the work when time comes to go to a bigger meeting for people to know me. Then you give it to carry somebody else. Anyway, before I left Justice Department, President Tobo wanted to know why is it that President Speaker and the Chief Justice were not paying income taxes. They have passed the Liberian Income Tax Law. But these people, nobody dare collect tax from President's salary, the Chief Justice, and the, the, the uh, 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 other Vice President. They didn't pay taxes. So they went to a cabinet meeting, and President Tobo wanted to know whether he could get Justice Department opinion on whether or not he should pay taxes as President. I'm trying to tell you who I am. So bear patient. 
we are here for that today. Uh, so all of us, we met down there in the, on the last window down in the Justice Department there. And everybody said, well, you know, yeah, the president has a little pay time because they are the leader of the country. And these are the three main leaders, the, the judiciary and, uh, you know, the vice president. And then, you know, so, 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 so. Well, I look at the income tax law. Every public civil servant must pay tax, income tax to the government if you are working with government. All right. That's what the law says. So I wrote my memorandum to Clarence Simpson, then Minister of Justice, uh, that, yeah, the president is a public servant. He's a civil servant. According to the law, all civil servants pay taxes. Chief Justice is also a, self, a public servant. And the vice president is a public servant. They should pay taxes. They went to meeting at the ministry, I mean, at the executive mansion. They made all the report. And uh, Justice Ministry said, but I got one opinion. The majority wrote that they should not pay tax the president, vice president, and chief justice. But my memorandum was single one that said they should pay tax by virtue of the law that they were public servants, uh, civil servants. Uh, I, I was sitting in the, in, the, in the office there, and Clarence Simpson sent his uh, big, long car, and he said, I'm going to come to a cabinet meeting. It's the first time I ever, I didn't know. In fact, I said, I didn't even know people were having meetings there. So I, I got in the car when I reached there, I said, I walked, I, I got in, then I saw all these well-dressed, highly respected librarians sitting down. These were captain minister, not Tokba, Tobo. Uh, so Tobo said, come in. So I came in, then he gave me a chair, I sat down. And he said, you are the one in Justice Department, you wrote, say, I'm going to pay taxes. You're not President of Liberia. I said, ah. he said, stand up. I said, ah, what kind of trouble did today? <laughs> so, ah, so I stood up. So he said, yeah, I'm asking you a question. You, you, you say that the President will pay tax? You ever see that? <laughs> I said, yes, sir. I said that. I wrote a memorandum. He said, yes, so I'm asking you now. I said, yes, sir, you're supposed to pay tax because you are a civil servant according to the law. He said, I, I cited the section in my letter when I was writing the Minister of Justice. He said, so you, so I said, yeah, because you are a civil servant, I mean, public, uh, yes, yeah, civil servant. And then uh, there's no uh, exclusion made in the statute saying that the vice president, president, vice president, and chief justice should not pay taxes. No exception, sir. It says you are, to me, even though you are elected to your office and other people are appointed, but then you are a public servant, civil servant. You work with government. For me, anybody who works with government is a civil servant. He said, and I hear. I said, yes, sir. He said, all right. Uh, Simpson, I want him to be, make him an, what, what is he doing now? He said, well, he's a legal counsel. He said, all right. Let him be assistant minister, create a position for assistant ministership and let him be the, the assistant minister. So the president on first sight gave me a job. And who did it? President William R. Tobo. And you know I'm going to like him because he's the only one who looked in the trash can, in the, in the trash basket and took me out that I could be a paper that can be straightened and have use. God was already thrown away. I come from the village. I got no family connections. I was just here. In fact, Chesson asked me to be Joe Chesson the third. Well, I took that name because I feel that he said if I didn't take the name of graduating then. If you don't take my name, then I will not support you. I have nothing to do with your graduation. So I told the people at BWI, you all can put Joseph J. Chesson the third. You all put on my. <laughs> so I did that. Well. I did that to move on. Uh, nothing can stop me. I must move. I have a problem calling, being called somebody's name temporarily because I knew what I was going to do when I got of age and capable to sustain, to be my own man. At that time, I was not my own man. I was just a student. So I took Chesson's name. On well, my diploma today, you see Joseph J. Terson the third. I went to America with that name. My grandfather... 
Church, I mean Mr. Chipo. His name is Srayu Chipo. Srayu Chipo was a very hard man to work with. He was very dynamic and strict. When the time meet tomorrow or today and say tomorrow all of us are going to clean the road leaving from, from uh, the uh, Gabriel Tucker Bridge all the way to uh, Douala. And everybody should be there first thing in the morning. The country devil will be there. Women should not go on that side of the farm because men will be working there. My f grandfather will be the first person there with his power wine. And if you come late, you and him will have problems. So he was a strong public servant, strict and dynamic. For some reason, I, I got that instinct of my grandfather. And so you and I can be doing something that had to be right. I don't get anything by doing that. It's only I get plenty of bad name about it. People tend to show me, maybe they're afraid of me, because they think I will expose them. I don't go around exposing you. I just will not join you. I will not do it. If it's not right, I will not do it. If the president's about to pay taxes, I will tell him he must pay taxes because of what the law says. I'm not going to say uh, this and that big the issue. This is how I have been all along. Anyway, having known President Torba from my first inter in interaction with him, when Kambi died in 1975, I got a job. I was not being paid properly, so I got a job with Ministry of Lands and Mines. They were paying more money to me than Minister of Justice, Assistant Minister of Justice. So I went to take the job. And Simpson didn't want me to leave the, the office, the Justice Department. So he blocked me with the Minister of, 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 of Lands and Mines, and I didn't get the job. I ain't like that. I don't want people blocking me. So I left the Justice Department and went off country. Uh, I'm saying all I did to let you know that I am my own man. Let me say what uh, uh, work uh, this man I got to the American people, even though I work with Bill Clinton, but I am my own man. I make my own decisions. So I left and went up country to make farm. I set up a country, a company called JEDECO, JEDE Development Corporation. We were involved in farming, leaving law and going to agriculture. I went up country. And I didn't only just do agriculture for myself. I saw to it that the deed that my people were aspiring for, for which I was interpreter in, uh, in Plebo, Maryland County, to Chief Justice Jack Dash Wilson, who was a lawyer for our tribe. There was always a confrontation for land. I told you there are big tribes that are running up, but we got more land than they do because we used to fight them. My father is one of the heroes with the Glaros. He killed their hero right on, our, on, uh, on in the center of our town, uh, who happened to be my mother's relative. Uh, so we, I saw to it that we got that land. I got the land. I bought the land to redeem me from Dodge Wilson through my wife. When I came, when I was coming home, I, I fell in love with one lady called Marvel Morse. Marvel Morse. At the time when I was in Cleveland, Ohio, for after I graduated, Marvel Morse were all in the paper. She was the first best teacher in reading in the primary school, and so she got an award. So that was cool, huh? So uh, very educated, you know. And you got this you notoriety know, in the in the paper, in the white paper, where there's discrimination and all of that. So uh, I met her with Brogan. Brogan was a cook for one of the Methodist uh, preachers. He went to America there, and he was working. So he, 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 I visited him. He said, oh, uh, somebody is coming. Uh, to, I'm, I'm having a dance here and a birthday party for my girlfriend. I had some friends who would be coming. I was alone at the time. They had a girlfriend. I left my girlfriend in North Carolina. Uh, so, and I was shy with women, my people. I didn't get into this thing. I was told to do it before I started with my business. I, I, did, I did not get into I didn't like women, and, and I was not too friendly with them. But now I am the lover of women, because I know what they can do. Yeah. So 
I went to dance with Marvel. You know how we can dance here? We Liberian boy, we dance. And be the way how we used to dance. Uh, so I started dancing, then I stepped in on Marvel's foot. But the girl know how to dance. Who teach you like this? She not, I said, Marvel, you can't dance. Say yeah. And then we got interested and we married. And we came home. Marvel's father was a trucker. He had a truck company. This is a man who couldn't read and write, the American Negro, as they call them, black man. He, he takes his truck and distributes or transport building materials. You just imagine the city of Cleveland, how big it is. And when we were there in those days, it was just, uh, black people were just, people were building. Uh, there was a movement there to bring, build a new class. Uh, uh, black people had universities and, uh, and you know, people were getting educated and they had money. And Mr. Uh, uh, Moss was transporting, he was saying he had plenty of money. I took money from my father-in-law and bought the land. I didn't just go up country, this is what I did. So I am the first indigenous student who left home, came to school, graduated, went back and did something for my people. The very land they used to fight war for, they don't have to fight war now. They own the land legally. My grandfather fought the hero, as a hero. But then I decided, well, we don't need to fight about that. This is a legal matter. So we made sure we got the land, we got the deed. I got it right now in my trunk. So they got land. They don't have to fight for it anymore. All right. Then I decided, well, since I already in Grand Jure County, uh, Senator, Tua, uh, Senator Conway died, and I want to run for Senate. So I began to campaign for the Senate. Jackson E. Doe from Nimba County, uh, President Torbo, they were my advisor. So Jackson Doe told me, well, the thing to do is get one cow for Torbo, one cow for Speaker Henry, and one cow for Mike Deshi. He was chairman of the True Party in those days. I said, all right. So I got the cows. I put it in the pickup. I carry it. I always drive pickup. I'm still driving it today. Uh, I drove it myself. Uh, my wife now tells me, my Muslim say I'm too old. I'm not old, please. So I drive my pickup. And I was supposed to have a small stroke. But because I drove, I am driving my pickup, my left hand is supposed to be paraly par paralyzed. I am not sick. My leg, the left leg now is more stronger than the right leg. And this is where I felt the pain. Because I have to use the clutch to change the gear and all of that. And that gave me strength. And I think driving a car at my age uh, is like running every morning. It's physically fit. You have to turn the wheel. My power steering is not working anymore. So I have to turn it with my arms, my stomach moving. So I'm physically fit every morning. And. Uh, I ran for the Senate. I asked President Torba, went to Bentor. I told you, old man was building his, his place there. And uh, he talked with me. President Torba liked to talk to people. He was a very good progressive. But he was in the midst of an establishment. And his advisors were very conservative. So he could not expound or undertake his progressive stance. Even though he died in the process, but Torbo was between two pillars. The young people were for change, but he was in the midst of old people who were very conservative and were not prepared to change. So he didn't know he was bound by this. He was enslaved by this condition. At time, Togman want, President Torbo wanted to be liberal, but his true party hegemony would not let him do that. Because everything they did, they have to have meeting. They have a chairman. They have a secretary general. All the great officials of the government were all true party members. And he could not just do anything. The only thing I see is that it's the system that confronted me, you, President Torbo, and the true party. The people who build this building you in now. They were too strict 
in what they believed. They were not prepared to change. And all of us that work with them, talk about, talk about sustained death unnecessarily. We got bad name. I'm still talking. I'm still answering questions. Not just the TRC asking me to come talk here this morning. People still ask me about the things that happened when we were uh, working for change here. Boys meet me, say, you remember I was in jail with y'all? And when y'all got in power, y'all never gave us any job. Even though I put some of the boys, many boys that I knew, I just threw them in the police force. I said, you, 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 that was illegal. But that was a revolutionary stance. You, the boys who were, who could be sent quickly. I said, okay, y'all making sergeant, make them own lieutenant, make that water man private, make them, they, you go to CID. People who used to bring messages to us and go to the soldier and get message from us and go to the go to Richard Henry house and get information from the cook and other things. They were CID people because that was the work that the work they were doing. So Tobo introduced me to Abba White, who was the superintendent. I am a citizen of Grand Jeter County and I live in fact it was Abba White. I took my wife my after the Simpson blocked me not to get a good job at Lens and Mine as a lawyer. I took my wife and I, we went. And I was going in my village to stay with my American children and my American woman. The Abba White is the one who called me that money and said, well, he was superintendent at the time. Let me drink some water, my people. Abba White told me, Chipo, you bring an American woman from a big city, and you say you're going to the village, you got a hospital there, and uh, I said, yeah, but she's a good teacher, she will go and set up a school. He said, well, first of all, no school there, and you're not working. So when you get there, the woman will not be working, where you will get money to set up a school, you got to build a schoolhouse and do this and get students, all that kind of thing. It will take time. No people in the village don't have money to pay, to pay uh, tuition and this and that. So how are you going to manage? You're going to go down. I know you're not able to make farm and cut steak and burn the place, and your wife plant the rice. She's not disposed to doing that. So since you want to come home, today I'm simple channel here, stay in, 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 in the city. At least I would recommend the woman she can be teaching in the school, since she's a teacher. And you can be practicing your law. and you lawyer? I said, yes, sir. I said, all right. Then he called his special assistant. He said, come and I, I, I saw a house there that the missionary was using for guest house. They're not there now. I said, yes, OK. I rented to Mr. Chipo and his family, so they're going to stay here. That's how I got in his bedroom. But when I was running for Senate, Abba White was not supporting me. He wanted one old man called Gibson. I knew I had something to do for them. But uh, Abba White thought that the old man should be the first to get a chance. In those days, that's what the true party does. First come first. But it, when Tokma, when President Tobo went to uh, uh, Zredru, Grand Jeter County, to raise funds for the Methodist school compound that is there now, I gave them 500 Liberian dollars in those days. And I was not plenty of money. I used to practice law up there. And those of you who are young people, I want to tell you now in sin. Don't get, if you are a lawyer, don't get your law degree and just sit down in Morovia. There's plenty of money there, off country. When I went off country, my practice became better. I got more money. Because they will give me cows. They will give me goats. They will give me clean rice. They will do things for me. People will keep animal and take it all away from Totan. They say, I killed this deer. And so I wanted to, I don't want to sell it, so I bring it to you, counselor. So I have meat in the house, I have rice, I have different, different things. I like to eat something they call bitter roux. People will make bitter roux for me. And so I had a nice time, more than what I had in Morovia here. So when you get your education, go home. Don't go to the village unless you're close to the capital of the, of the county. Go to the village and pursue your educational endeavor or your professional endeavor. Don't go in the country. The way to get a job, and if you want to be a politician, it doesn't matter. But go back to your village. I went to my village, and it was easy for me to. I didn't even go in representative. I, I, I went straight to the Senate. 
all my government job, I take the big one. I don't take small one. So when I was, yes. Well, you got to hang your wagon to a star. You want to do something, you do it well. Uh, when I got ready to marry, I made sure I married an educated woman. And so, and I, meet, I, I found a woman who had a very bad, good beginning financially. So I didn't have a problem. My wife pay our way to come here. Me, I, I arrived here with $10 in my pocket. When I got here, I called her. My wife, the $10 I brought, cousin T.A. didn't have a fitting place to stay. So I had to take that $10 and, and rent a room. And I got malaria. So I, I'm sick. Marvel had to send me money. But when I took her home, she knew. She got to know that this was not just a pauper that she married. There was a man that came from some family, some background, that worth notice and respect and, uh, and was to be respected. So go back home. When you graduate, go back. Don't linger around. Clara Town, New Crew Town, Central Morovia, and waste your time. You want to be a politician? Go back home. Let the Maserato boys take over Maserato. You go back home like I did. That is the way to start. It's very easy. You know your people, and you are in a better position because you wanted the best. So I went home, and President Talbot told Superintendent White at the end of his journey, he stayed in Zedru. He took my hand at the end of the city. Every time I reach that spot, I want to cry. And he took my hand and put it in our white right hand. He said, there is some good in the man. So support him. So, sorry, I left the podium. In other words, he told me that there is some good in me, so our white right should support me. So, I was elected by a true party as a senator. There are 24 electoral districts in Grand Jeter County. And this is how the true party made its, its their decision. We didn't do it by popular vote. We did it by uh, administrative vote. I had resolution, and the rule was give resolution to one candidate. And the country, our indigenous people knew that. The true party chairman in the very electoral district knew better that you gave only one recommendation, one resolution to one candidate. Look at all the candidates, and each district you give one resolution. You don't give it to not the thing we do here when Peter Khan, you're getting resolution, then Henry Khan, you're getting resolution. No. So they gave me, out of the 24 electoral districts, I was able to get 21 resolutions. Right here in the True Party building. And Omer Toa told the president, the True Party delegate, that's how, that's how you win election in the True Party. They control the system. You got electoral uh, resolution from each district. Then you put the, the ballots together, the resolutions, and you bring them to the true party uh, uh, meeting. Then at that meeting, they will be sitting just like this, and they will call each candidate. And they will ask the chairman of the party, uh, how many resolutions is candidate Peter has, or candidate Chipo has? I had uh, 21 resolution out of 24, so I became senator. I got to be senator through the true party without even knowing. I ain't run camping. I ain't spend no money. I ain't do nothing. I, I don't know. I, every time I lay in my bed, this is the better system. It's cheaper. You had to work, spend plenty of money. The little the 24 electoral district, my expenses were very small. You know, and at that time, Marvel sent for money from her father. And so we had enough money. We always have a pickup, plenty of gas. And so it was easy for me to get to be a senator. I got to be a senator through the True Party. I got in the Senate, but I didn't forget my cheap reason. Uh, it had to be right if I'm going to participate. If it's not right, you got a problem with me. And I will not relent to let you know I'm not doing it. So I got in the Senate. They asked us to pray. And President Pro Tempore of the Senate, Frank Tauber, said, uh, gentlemen, uh, let us pray. He didn't say, rise up. He said, let us pray. So everybody stood up. Me, I turned around and kneeled on my chair. After the meet, that prayer, 
Everybody was standing up, so when they say amen, they were all looking. Me, I, was, I had to get up from my knees. And, and Frank Tobin had a problem about that. He said, why? We tell people praying, and we all standing, then you need it. You know, suppose, when you get in back town, you do as the back uh, do. I said, well, I thought this was the Liberian Senate. Uh, this is my constitutional right to pray as I wish, the freedom of religion. All of you can stand up when you talk to your God. But when I talk to my God, I kneel. That's why I knelt. Now you're telling me uh, uh, this and that. So I, I, I'm not going to do that. He said, all right. So he went and told his brother, uh, President Tobo, about the upstart uh, 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 boy that got in there. He said he's senator. Uh, he's an upstart. And he, he always uh, saying that his constitutional right. So President uh, Tobo, every time we meet, he will say, Constitutional right, and I say constitutional right, and that's the name me and the old man had. All right, so Frank Tower is a lawyer, Richard Henry, the speaker, is a lawyer. There were plenty of lawyers in there. Well, I had my law firm from Grand Jede County when I came, so I was a senator, I had a law firm, and I was practicing. And one company that is uh, in Cloud Town, there they used to make marbles, you know tires that we call tires for the, for the house. And uh, they asked me to represent them. Well, it, it came, I came back to the Simpson Law Firm. And Simpson Law Firm that was representing uh, that factory told me to go to court uh, on this matter. So I went, when Simpson, Boiler Holder, I was a young lawyer. So they told me to go to court. So I went to court and I won the case. I ejected the man. He was wrongfully on a company property. He was working. He lost his job because of theft, and he was still living there. So we ousted him through the process of law. The Liberian Senate said, I went to court and as senator, and that was unbecoming of a senator. Who? Oh, you, you yourself talking, as friend of you yourself lawyer. You got law firm. And the Speaker of the House got law firm, Rich, the, the Henry's law firm. And I have seen Henry go to cases when it's very important. Yeah, he might not stand up and plead, but he will go to the Supreme Court and take a chair and sit there. And the Chief Justice know who's sitting there in this case. That's how he pleaded law. So I went to court, the true party hegemony inside the, uh, what they call the Senate, Liberian Senate. They say that, uh, this was 1977. They say that. I uh, did something that was unbecoming of a senator, so that so they expelled me from the Senate through a joint resolution. I got one fellow called Joseph Andrews. I will go look for Joseph Andrews, but then Joseph Andrews is crying on the radio now, saying he's, he's sick. sick. Well, Joseph Andrews was the man who made testimony. We all come from Weber District. He made testimony against me, and uh, when they were impeaching me from the Senate. So I would look for him, but they say he's sick. I would look for late money and go see him. He's my friend. Anyway, I was impeached, and I didn't like that. I thought, well, gross advantage on the part, taken of me on the part of a true party. And why these people, when you're working with them, they always try to do all kind of things to you? Eh? You think Frank Tower's son will be treated like that? No one of their children will be treated like that. But because my father was not among them, neither was my mother, so they just treated me any kind of way. And I didn't like it. So I decided to react against the True Party. And I did. I did by when I left the Senate, I went first to Tipotel with his uh, uh, moja. I went that morning, I talked to Dr. Tipotel. Y'all take your noro, we're coming near there. <laughs> Dr. Tipotel. And I talk. And we always, I used to, when I was in Kepamas, I used to like to go on the beach and go swim with the crew boys. So I know crew very well. And every time I see Dr. Tipote, uh, Tobad, I always speak crew, Bobby. And uh, so at that morning, looking for where, somewhere to go, just coming from the Senate, my name all oh, in the paper, all oh, the radio, how I did something unbecoming of a senator. All kind of things, so I was expelled from the Senate and all kinds of things. Every day, chipo, 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 chipo. So I said, well, I didn't pay attention to them. I decided what I was going to do. I was going to look for one of the ringleaders of the progressive movement. 
they threw the party got to go. And I made up my mind. They expelled me. I was going to nationally work to expel them from politics. And I did. So, I know I get yeah, a bill in there. I don't know why government can't take it over. Uh, that bill, in fact, that land belonged to the Liberian government, not for True Party. That is the last place of the American Colonization Society spot right there. It's not for True Party, but it took it because it had the power. If I ever make up my mind, I will file suit in court at the appropriate Supreme Court when it's sitting. We we'll take that land and make it government land. It's not true with party building. If you build any kind of mansion on my land, you got no title, that mansion go to me. Because you have no right there. So that building is the government building. So I went to Tipotec. We sat down that morning, we talked. He said he was having a meeting with Burma family, uh, Sawyer, and uh, 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 Comedy Wissa and Do Mason. Those were the Moja boys. I said, all right. We waited all the afternoon. Talk, 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 talk. And in the afternoon, uh, Sawyer came in, Burma family came in, and the other majority of them had gathered. So then he said, that, uh, oh, Councillor, excuse me. I said, all right. He left me. He, was about, he asked me I could participate in the meeting. But he left me sitting, and he went in there, had a meeting with, uh, with, uh, with these pe other people. So as I told his boy, after stating there for a long time, I know that they were in there now, deliberating on their meeting. So I sent there, I said, oh, tell uh, Dr. Chibuteso that I'm outside here. He said, okay. The boy went and came and said, I told him. I said, okay. Uh, later on again, I sent there. He said, oh, tell him I'm coming. So I picked up my bag and left. I was not welcome. And I feel, I still tell him that the people that discriminated against me. I am an upstart native boy like himself. Like he was crying here, I he had no shoes. We all came from the same stock. Then he will go have a meeting with a sawyer, a dancer person, and he will invite me. Then when I sit there, when the audience come, then he will exclude me and tell me he's coming. He did not forget about me. I took exception. So I walk out. So I heard about the progressive alliance of Liberia pile. So I'm looking for somewhere to go now. I'm looking for allies <laughs> for my war of change. So I decided to go to, to, to progressive people because I was rejected by the Moja people. So I said, well, OK, I'll go. First, my, 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 my first choice was to go to Moja. But Moja rejected me. So then, in, in essence, what they did, I felt it as a rejection. So then I went to down on Garley Street there. They had a PP, uh, you know, PAL meeting. So I went there. As soon as I walk in, I was late chairman, G. Back of my feet, walk out, say, yeah, hey, our lawyer has come. Just say, I can't leave it. Why that small thing bring it? Because I'm going to be dancing here. <laughs> oh, it is here. Oh, testing, testing. All right. Bakwa Mafi walked out and stretched for his hand and welcomed me as the lawyer for Progressive People's Party, uh, for the PAL, Progressive Alliance of Liberia. Oh, I ain't even tell him what I'm here for. Maybe I was here on a private business. Then you go give me a job already, a lawyer. So I accepted the job because that's what I was looking for anyway, a place to stay. <laughs> so I became a member of the Progressive Alliance uh, 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 of Liberia. And I took part in all the Central Committee meetings. In our Central Committee meetings, the only thing we really usually dwell on, how we were going to be able to form a political grouping that we had control over as young people. So, people who were fighting Go, on, go to court. I always used to, I went to Cape Man. I never saw Cape Man before. I went there to release people from jail. My father said, Chesson was then Minister of Justice for, uh, uh, what is his name? For, for the Turbo government. He was first removed, then when things became critical, they brought Chesson back. Uh, I went to Nimba. I was in Nimba representing Doki, Sam Doki, and other people who were being in prison. At the same time, Turbo was visiting there for development meeting in, in, in uh, San Equilly there. When we came back, that's the time Bacchus Matthew 
and some boys try to go to the mansion to see pre to make a protest. When I came from there, we had a, 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 a central committee meeting. I told Bacchus, I said, Bacchus, if we're looking for president, it won't be you. I'm not going to replace Bacchus, Matthew, with a turbo. So we're going to get one country man who had a name queer or a name Dote. He's going to be the president. First of all, I, I dare your approbation for going to the mansion after 6 o'clock when the flag is down to go make political protest. A protest. That was erroneous. And that was a bad decision you made. Mind you, the power is not your, your pocket thing. All of us are inside here, and we are the one dying and suffering. So if you think you're going to run party in your pocket, let true party, the president or chairman can run. Few people running, it will not be there. We have a central committee. If you know you want to march on the mansion at night time, you should let the central committee know so they can properly advise you. But you, you risk the life of our members. So you're not going to be our president. Queer, you know, I told you. So, Baga Matthew and I, we had difference of opinion. Then, I will continue when we have meetings, especially in March when we, Toba used to invite us to try to, to negotiate. Uh, at one time, he wanted to put our members in the government. So we said, well, if you put in the government, you will be swallowed. And when you're in a dissisting stomach, the little thing you're going, you're going to be a digester, and all the other variable in you will be going to the various part, and you will be split, and you will not be able to do anything. So we can't take government job. What we want, we're calling for a by-election so that we can have our own candidate. Toba did not accept that. All right. So we were there. Uh, after the rest riot, the rest riot, I wish I was a participant. I didn't take part in the rest riot at the time. I went to represent the Assembly of God Church as a lawyer. They were having problems with the missionary. They wanted to take the church over, and the missionary still wanted to leave it. They wanted to go, but the missionary wanted to dispose of the property. So they asked me to be their lawyer. I got to be their lawyer when I was in Justice Department. So I didn't attend that meeting. But then I was living at the Broville uh, Mission. They were living at the time when they had this rest riot. Uh, the rest riot was deadly. But this is what happened. The Progressive People's Party uh, being, not progressive, but PAL. PAL being a, a, an activist organization dedicated to agitation and change. And had his own newspaper and and could tell the public. In fact, when we didn't have newspapers, this is how we used to do. Those of you who want to be in the rank, the, 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 you know, want to take part in change. When you don't have money to publish your own newsletter or your newspaper, just get the newsboys. Tell them when they get their paper and ready to sell it, just put your, 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 your circular inside there. That's how we used to let everybody know. Before we, we get something to do, President Toba will know it. Because he reads the newspaper and he will see our circular inside the paper. That's how you do it, easily. And the newspaper printer will not know, even if they know they have nothing to do with it. Usually you pay your money and get your paper. And they pay you for selling it, so you can do anything with it. But later on we formed our own newspaper, The Revolution. And we used to write. Uh, I did not see, I'm the lawyer now, work with government. And the government of True Party was very segregative in giving native people job. They wanted the group that came, they wanted to be the leader at all time, and it was not possible. They were getting smaller, they died quicker here because of the climate, they got different uh, approbation in their body because they came from America. But we were born here, and we were born resistant to some diseases, but they were not able to do that. So their population was not increasing. But they, as they, they uh, you know, Civilization, education, rules, government spread throughout the country. The country people got to be aware of this good society, new one, where you don't really have to bend down and be caught, caught in bush and this and that and sweating. There was an easier way to live. You come to Monrovia and be educated, you'll make it. So we did that. All right. Uh, they refused. They didn't like it. They called the Central Committee members, the leadership, to go to the mansion. Their negotiation broke down because they didn't want us 
to have the, 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 the match. Well, he said, why y'all want to, when government take action, then why you just an organization called out? Well, we wanted to be known by action, by the way we do things. We want to participate in anybody. We wanted to uh, let the old people know that we wanted another speaker too. They were not only the speaker. We wanted them to pass this dice back to us. And we wanted them to know that we were ready to receive it at the appropriate time. And we didn't want to do it unlawfully. We wanted to do it in keeping with the details of our constitution and the laws of Liberia. And I always told them, this is not legal. This is not legal. That is not legal. I told our central committee, making a march at the mansion in the night time was illegal. After 6 o'clock, the flag is down. Anything can happen. They didn't have any security approbation to go march in the night to our mansion. It was wrong. I told them that. Yeah, you know I did. And therefore, when the president said they didn't want us to march, I felt that maybe we should give it another time. But we were, the Central Committee decided, in that one man, that we were going to right away let no sense. President Toba was not disposed to re reducing the price or changing his opinion. Uh, then we're going to let him know that that was not right. And certainly the increase in rights was wrong. Because at the time, people were making small money. Government couldn't pay. Government was paying, but government was paying nothing. That's why you have when you go to, to, to the ministry, when somebody signs your paper, or the mention not tell the chief that you come to see him, you got to give him something they call dash. To augment his salary, his income, the government was not paying anything. Why few people were getting millions? They would go and borrow money to do development. They divide it among themselves. And so when the payroll for government is late, they will call Richard Henry. They will call President Tauber. They will call Frank Tauber. They will call their, their, their clique. And each of them will donate money. But when the loan comes, they will take that development loan and pay each of them. So by the time we got in the street, they got billions in, the, in, in, in banks, in the Swiss bank. They didn't care to build a bank here. No, they build their bank abroad. If the, the, the billions of dollars were in our banks, it will, it will have some. And when you know when you eat food in your body, you're strong. You, 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 you're not weak. If you're hungry, you'll be a weak man or a weak person. But when you eat this morning and you, your stomach full, you're strong for that day. So if they had that economic power, money, our money that they took, if they had it here, this country would have been a viable African economic state. Because that money, it would touch somebody, the bankers, their nephews, their sisters, their brothers. The money was going to touch us. But no, they had it way in Swiss banks. And we didn't have anything here. I had 10 shares in the Liberian Bank for Investment and Development. They got yet to give me loan. But they do give loans who got American Liberian names. And I am one of the visually outgoing, openly known citizen in this place. I can't get loan from LBDI, even though I'm a shareholder. They get loan to other people, talking about the, the narrowness of the past system. The greed, bordering around wickedness and hatred. We were not responsible for them being sold as slaves. No, I was not here. My father wasn't here. And the slaves, they were not sold only from this coast. They were sold from Nigeria. They were sold from all along the coast of West Africa. Some came from East Africa. Some came from North Africa. So they decided to bring them here. Then why they want to pay their debt on us? I have a problem with that. We were not responsible for the slavery. We suffer it. But now the slave, the free men that came, they wanted to pay us back for their slavery. We're not responsible. We were subjected to it. We were exploited. So we were not the, the wrongdoers. The wrongdoers are your masters beyond the sea that brought you here. So you're supposed to welcome us. And make us to accept the new life and be like you. Then you won't have problem. You will not be insecure. But because of the way you live, they wanted to live as Americans, as, as white people. Whereas we were already living as Africans. You live according to your climate. 
and according to your society. Here, we deny the devil. The African naturally live here on this continent. We didn't worry about new things. We did what our foreparents did from time to time. Yeah, you can call it undevelopment. You can call it lack of progress. No, but we were, we, we African perpetuate our long beginning. We don't do new things. We don't, that's why we don't have scientists. That's why we don't explore the skies. We don't go beyond the sea. We fish right around here. We don't go beyond our territorial water. We, can't, we, can't, we don't even exhaust it because it's 200 miles. We don't go that far. We just fish around here because we are Africans. Because you have a different culture than we have, didn't mean we're not the same countrymen, especially when you set up a government and we were subdued and were willing to work with you. Then there was no need for you to. You should welcome us and try to embrace us and make us to be like you, but not to discriminate against us. That when I have to send you to school, then you got to be chastened. You must be chastened before I can help you. They were not right. They were not right. And me, I knew hey, we're not going to stay like that. When I was a little boy in, in, in our home, I was small in size. Because my mother had problems, she almost lost me during her pregnancy. So I didn't grow up tall. All my brothers are tall, tall, big people. But my, my grandfather is a tall black man on my mother's side. My father, my grandfather on my father's side, they say he was also a hero. You remember I told you he killed the, 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 the hero of the Glara people in our last war. But I'm tiny because my mama had problems when she was having me. So I, she called me her troubled child, but she loved me the best. Why? Because when mama call and you don't answer, she got a problem with that. And mama used to always say, you people suffering behind, what you will do for me? And for true, by the time I got out of school, mama died. Only my father was able to enjoy. I made him prison uh, warrior. He, he, he came to me at Justice Department, and my son, I want to work where I want to be lieutenant. I said, Papa, you can't go in the army and be lieutenant. Uh, you, you, you first thing, he said, I said, there's no job here. First, you got to know both Papa before you work in the office. And, uh, and you, you, know, you, know, you, write, you wrote me the letter. I told him that. I know you be my son, N-O, instead of K-N-O-W. So, so, so you, not, you can't work in any government office. You, you, so, so I said, OK, I will send you to the prison in the uh, sweat room and make you a warner there. That is the job I gave my father. He's working there as a warner. OK. Uh, with all this background, my people, we felt out that all the disease in all of these things was the political system was not good. It was wrong. It was wrong. You all have problem with the microphone, eh? Yeah. OK. No, it might be closer. What about this one? It's not working. Oh, I'm going to go closer. OK, you got to have microphone that will be more sensitive. Uh, I thought that the true party, as I say, our American Liberian hegemony or their society should have been a little more liberal society. Just how the people in America, the American Colonization Society members, they were liberal. They didn't want the black people to be in their society, so they decided to send them to Africa. So they came as a beacon of hope and progress. But then I was, our brothers and sisters that came, they didn't see it that way. They thought that they have come as masters, and they, we, they didn't go any. They tried to let you know every day. And one thing I love about them, if an American Liberian visit the office of another, as soon as he hears say Peter John, oh, the man will come out. He will come outside to meet his friend. Now the thing that you indigenous people do, when I go in there, people that will leave me sitting and go have a meeting. That's not what they do. They're very receptive. But you have to be one of their members. And if you want to be accepted, you have to be like them. Carry their name. Wear shoes and speak good English. Otherwise, you countrymen. And when you are countrymen, you got no place here. This is not a country people place. This is a Morocco Liberian society. I have a problem with that. I think it should have been changed. 
and it should be changed during my time. So, the match was legal. Citizens have a right to do, to, to stage a legal process, a legal process or have a, have a legal dissent with the judgment of government. They do that everywhere. Even in America when I was there, during the Martin Luther King uh, protest days. People march. Yeah, they put them in jail. But they go to court and release them. They are not criminals. They just violate uh, what you call uh, public safety laws. When you violate public safety law, it, the penalty is not death. Be shot by soldiers and wounded by them without medical treatment. Oh, no. I just violated the public safety law. My, my, my penalty is supposed to be light fine and uh, go by my business and never to do it again. No. The two party took a peaceful march. I call it a peaceful march. You impose the price of rights. We had a renegotiation. We didn't just jump out and go make march. We were responsible people with women and children. I say women, eh? No, I mean, they have women, not me now. Not that I have plenty of women. I mean, I don't know about that, but, you know, I mean, all of us were married people. We were responsible, educated boys, men and women. And uh, we didn't want to go and, 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 and just violate the law. And they had an experienced lawyer who had already been working in, in, in the justice department, in the system. One of the lawyers who was able to tell the president, say, you got to pay taxes. That way your president can pay taxes now. I said, I'm going to pay taxes. The law was there, but they didn't go by it. That who know you system. Because you president, you be me and say, oh, I will not collect tax from you. And you get the highest salary, then you say, you may not pay taxes. That was not cool. That was not constitutional. But the true party did not do that. They didn't have to shoot the boys for demonstrating. No, let them get them police protection. Let them march. When they get hungry, they will leave the streets. Just make sure they don't destroy and damage public property and individual and put other individuals at risk. As long as they march through the street peacefully and airing their differences, uh, you should, government shouldn't have problem. No, they went on a tangent of shooting. And the thing about it in this place is that the few American librarians will take native men to suppress native men. The police that shot our boys and wounded us and put us in jail. Those who kept keys, lock and keys and whipped us, they were native people. They were the American American Liberian people. For self-interest, you will go against your own brother. That's what got us here today. Thank you. We could have had a better treatment in prison. Nobody was supposed to be killed if our native policemen did not take the, 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 the wrath on us and shoot us. I didn't see any American Liberian men as a police in the street. It was the Vibe boys and the Ketebo boys and the Baza boys, the, the Gola boys and the Loman boys. They were the police. They shot their own people. They shot us. Then we blame it on the few just because they were at the top. We should stop that. We should all be committed to being, to act civilly. Civilly. When you want to do something, think to yourself, is it fair, humanly? We all go to church every Sunday here. Is it religiously correct? Would it be nice in the sight of God before you do it? Don't do it for self-interest. And that's what they did to us. They murder their fellow citizens. But the problem I have with the system was when it happened, they should have conducted an investigation in the police force. They should set up a committee to investigate. Who fired the first shot? Because I know William Arotoba did not tell them to come shoot us. I know he didn't do it. I know William Arotoba well. He was caught between the system. He was the most progressive president the country ever had. Because I saw him. 
The man who took my hand and put it in our white hand, my superintendent at Grand Jere County, and say there's some good in the man. Toba knew that there was some good in our movement. And I know you could not have told the police you'll go and shoot. But our own people, Joe Myers, he was the police director. Our own boys. Joe Myers is a man from Swedro, Grand Jere County. They shot our boys and made and, and brought the confusion. So it's not just the American Liberians. It is both the American Liberians and the so-called native people. And the native people, I don't know, because they eat plenty of pepper, they don't have a sensitive, resolute, rational way of responding to things. Everything that falls. You can't advise your children, you must beat them. Once your mom tells Papa that you did so, he's ready to beat you. That's what my father used to do. He will now one day advise you and say, well, okay, you don't do that when your mom tell you. You must try to do this. Yeah, don't do it. No, Papa will not do it. So my mom say, look, this man acted rude today. In fact, he, shot, he, he, he said he insulted our visitor here. He's going around fighting other children. You are ready. He's ready for punishment. And I know all of you know what I'm talking is true. They ain't got mercy. They ain't got reconsideration. They just take action. And when you put them in the police force and in the army, they will just take action because they got the power. That's what brought us here today. I wish the police can come to come talk here too and not just leave it with the government and myself because they were the one who fired the first shot. Our intention was good. The price is high. You say we may not reduce it, the government cannot reduce it. Then since government cannot reduce it, we will make our protest public. That's all we did. But not, they did not take the penalty of death. They didn't worth it. That's what they did. Now when they did that, then we became more determined. They want to crush us. And Chechibo, Baka Matthew, Oscar Kuya, they were, these are boys that you can't crush. You know these boys came from difficulties. Baka's father did not take care of him, and he's proud of telling us that. Matthew did not take care of Baka's. Baka's grandmother took care of him from small, because Matthew said I was not his child, Mr. Matthew. So Baka Matthew also know the agony of being born in that kind of situation. I wish that this hearing will make Liberian people know that all of us were not wrong. We were just victim of our system. The American Liberians, the country people, the police, those of us who rioted in the street, we just victim of a bad system. And I think the reason I agreed to come here, because even though they misspell my name two times, T-R-O-C, that's about the right, uh, uh, what you call it, history, why y'all call that kind of history y'all coming right? Uh, 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 contem contemporary history. You are, you are contemporary man, contemporary commission. You will spell people's name wrong. Go to any newspaper, they will tell you my name. Go to any press. Ask anybody in the country. Anybody you see go to Sunday with suit on, ask him to spell cheapo. My name always in the newspaper. When did he feel there, I don't talk. And President Ellie even had a problem with that. Say, why are you not talking? I said, well, ma, I ain't got nothing to talk. And you're doing the thing now. And we got motor party system. So even though the party went and put all kind of people in, in, the, in the government, all kind of people in the legislature, well, I'm an old man now. This is not time to make youthful protests. I'm supposed to be sober, considerate, and try to study problem and find peaceful solutions. This is what I'm doing. That's why you don't hear me talking. All right. We decided to form a party. Then they went to meeting. After the, 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 the riot, they killed us. No investigation. They didn't set up a panel of investigation to find the root causes and who shot the first gun. Because police were not authorized to shoot peaceful citizens who didn't carry guns but merely marching in our streets. They didn't do that. So we went to, I told my, I advised. After that riot, we went to our central committee meeting, and I told 
the Central Committee meeting of Pile, that right now we are just a group of renegades. We're not organized. PAL is not a registered organization. PAL will not go anywhere and sue. Because in order for you to sue and be sued, you must be a legal person if you are an organization. So what we need to do is to form a party. Then we will be credible. Then we will be like a true party. Then we will have a member who will have leadership. And when the government wants something, the government will know who to talk to. But one day they come back, I'm not here, Oscar Queer here, Oscar Queer not here, then somebody else is here, and we were just there. We were just a secular group, not organized. So I told, I told them, we need to have a party. So they said, all right. But who will form the party? I said, well, then you say I'm a lawyer. And then back of my view asked me who will form the party. I said, but then I'm a lawyer. You say I'm a lawyer for the system. So I will form the party. So we won. We went ahead, drafted. I didn't know how to form party here. All the party where they forming now, they think what I did. That was the capping. Now I'm just looking at them. <laughs> there was no law, no system on how to form a party. Because you remember the time they formed the True Party? That document is lost. So what I did was, in order to become a legal person in law school, you had to be an incorporated organization. So I decided, first thing, the party needs to be incorporated. So I wrote a charter of incorporation. The election law required that you have 300 members, registered voters. Then you can go ahead. It didn't tell you you must get it from this county, that county. No. Because the reason why they didn't specify the county is if you got one million people in, 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 in Morovia and the rest of the country only 50,000 and you go and contest and the 100, one, one, one million people in Morovia vote for you and you win, you win because they say the majority. So really I'm going to have members in San Inquile or in, in Zwedru or in what else, that new town called Fish Town. I don't need people there. I just dwell on the center of population. So we went and wrote the charter. We took it to the probate court. I mean, uh, uh, what is the name? Uh, yes, it was the probate court. We registered it, took it to foreign affairs, and uh, recorded it. That was the party. Now, the problem we had is going through the probate court to register for the government to allow us to register a party. We had terrible time. We got one yellow American Liberian. He didn't look like African. He white man. He had green eyes. When I went to America, I said, oh, that man that was in Morocco, they, 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 I saw the white people, real white people from Sweden, other places. They got some kind of eyes. I don't know, cat high. So that man, he called himself Sawyer. He had cat eyes, he was a white man, straight hair. He went to court to file a petition stopping us not to form a party. And we had terrible time. I know he didn't do it alone. The true party, contrary to the law, to the law then prevailing, to the election laws of Liberia, under which the, president, the government at the time was elected, elected, they stopped us from forming a party. And so we had a long, tedious, we had to march on the Supreme Court. We told them they would shoot us when we start marching from our office. So go there one by one. By the time the court is ready to be seated, the judge is ready to mount the podium, the place is packed. The whole of the big office where they got the Supreme Court, it, it will be, the whole yard will be packed. Our boys will come from New Crew Town. They will come from Carysburg, Kakata, all around here and they will all be there. Then the judge look at it. We answer the caveat that they file, telling us that we are useful, irresponsible. We state riots and, 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 and make march, challenge government, all kind of that one story I put in all the paper. I used to have that paper, but you kind of wore I don't know where I left it. Uh, why those were not cogent reasons for you not to form a party? Citizens have a right to have peaceful. They didn't take us to court. They should have had an investigation. I told you to turn up a panel to, to find out what was the cause for this riot, for people to get killed in the street. If the decision of that panel came 
and say that we were responsible. They can say they are lawless people. The decision of this group say, of this government organization, government finding that they were involved in crime, look what they did, look what they did, causing the death of innocent citizens that they ordered to get in the street. They didn't do it. Nobody invest that. What they do in Liberia? When something happens, we just talk our talk, then we just leave it. They're not organized. It's not historical. It's not documented. Nobody knows what happened. You pretty soon, when I'm gone, you are gone, it's forgotten. But it will be a system that is embedding our, ch folk, our children, and it will happen again. And that's what occurred here. So they stopped us from organizing. And we didn't think it was correct. So we continue. We won the case. And the lady register us. You know why we register? That is same William R. Top. I told you the man progressive. As a lawyer, the judge told me, I'm not calling him. The man, that judge is still at the now to your associate justice there. He said, we're looking for a chief justice. I think she will be a good person. Because that other chief justice was there. He won't do the old American thing. And that old American, they play change. You know that. All of our American American Liberian children. We got all of our we got American Liberian children. And so we are really, if you want to say what the first class, we're a member of the American Liberian Society. We are lawyers, we are trained people. We've been to America too, and not just a settler. So they're not gonna come here and hey, where are you? This and that. No, uh, that's zero. You don't even know. Now you're not civilized. You're not you're uncouth. You're not supposed to behave like that. Somebody who chief justice is supposed to be calm, collective, respectful, law abiding, not a drunkard. <laughs> now, so we're looking for a new chief justice that our lawyer who made us party. Who in there that the person to identify, even though it will be a woman president, a woman chief justice, yeah, if that one call for will I be ready to go forward, then so be it. So she went to see President Tobo. She confided in me. She wanted her to form the party. She's a vile woman, you know. And she didn't have problem with it, but she was in the system. So she went, she told me, okay, uh, counselor, what you need to do, you all go home. I want to talk to the president. Yesterday I went there, I was not able to see the president. But you all give me three days. I will try to see the president. Then when I come back, I will let you all know. I said, all right. So I went outside. I said, uh, I will cry. Uh, you know, Progressive People's Party, PAL, will never follow backward, never, and all of that. So we told the children to go home, and we all went home. About three days thereafter, in fact, in two days, she was able to see me, and she told me, yeah, I saw the president, and the president said, we well, go ahead and register the party. That the top of me, you see that bad man, that's what he did. He just, he was progressive, but the true party hegemony was against him to change. So he agreed for us to start having parties, Tobo. Because the lawyer, the judge told me that she had to see the president, and she informed me that she had seen the president, and the president said that she could go ahead and register us as a party. Otherwise, we would never have been registered. So Tobo decided, since this is the case, then we'll go ahead and let other people form parties. So they gave us license. But I understand from the grassroots that the true party decided that after we are organized, then they will prosecute, persecute, prosecute, and persecute our leadership. Prosecute means I take you to court and deal with you according to law. Persecute means violently crush you, step on you, Give you no right. Bring extinction, eradication, removal, total from against you. You persecute me. That's what they decided to do. So after we organize, then we say, okay, well, as a new organization, we wanted to be heard. You go organize, then okay, because we're agitating. It was an activity for us when we go. We used to have some girls. I don't know where my PPP girl, uh, the power girls. I don't see them this time. I know they all marry and got children. They will cook. And a lot of boys come from home. You don't eat in the morning. You go to PPP office. We will cook. Cook. Excuse me to say, 
cook herbal food. Everybody will eat. So when we go to meeting, they are there. We, we just finish eating. People pay one one dollar, this and that. We used to sell our revolution paper. They take that money. So sometimes when we don't have, we eat the money, we cook and eat. So time to print the paper, no paper. Then we send one of our mobilizers called Kankala, D. Kankala. D. Kankala, I don't know where he, how he managed, but he's supposed to be some kind of person here in this system. I don't hear him. I saw him yesterday. D. Kankala will go and find the papers. I don't know how. But it's done legally because nobody ever came to us and said, D. Kankala did this, or my paper lost. No. He will get the paper for us. And even though we saw the paper, our newspaper yesterday, and we, we took the money, we cooked this money, now we won't print the paper again. Uh, you know, we don't have money. So Kankala will bring paper for us. He was our front man. He used to go and get things done. Uh, we wanted to exert ourselves now that we are an organized party. And we wanted Liberian people and the government to know that when you have a party, two parties in existence, and the government party then become the party, leading, leading party, but the other party, swas ponti, as a matter of law, become the opposition party. And opposition party is supposed to be accusative, active, provocative, bring new changes, advocate them, so that tomorrow when you ask for the election, they will say, yeah. No people who are over there who are talking, you're called them inside the house. The people will say that because they want the changes. If your changes are correct. So we call, we say that we needed to have a by election. So what we told President Torbo when he invited our chairman that uh, he wanted to put our people in the government after we said, No, we don't want, if you're going through party government, then you just remember or then you will not do anything. So we don't want to be member. Me, I was against it. Uh, Baka said, well, why don't we, uh, you know, we can get in there and work through the system. I said, oh, but then I, that ain't now. You, you work, what kind of system? You will not be able to work through that system there. And we decide to form a party. Come on, protest we want to do in the street that the people kill people. That you, you understand? Then they will be killing all individually. Every time, all of you that are in those systems, they will just kill you. Ba, ba, ba. When we go low, we finish. So we're not going to join them. So what we decided after that meeting was we want another election now. Then we got a, a second party. So we called it for the resignation of the president and to have a by-election. And two parties have problem with that. This was legal for a political party to call for election. When you find out that the sitting government is undemocratic and is not following the law, and therefore, you want to curtail the term of office and have election. Tobo had already been in office 12 years. So really, you were not a hungry president who wanted to be there forever. You know, and that's why most of the changes, he accepted them. Uh, the true party leadership, they, they, were, they were not uh, disposed to that. They were not disposed. They didn't want to give anybody a chance. So they arrested us. And for me, Lieutenant Howard always came to my cell door in the BT, in the, in the uh, post tucker. Your purchasing say, if anybody got free here, then not you. And that old man, that, 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 that uh, uh, Lieutenant always come to the prison and tell me that. They put I alone in one room. Oscar Kuya was lucky you were in there with all the boys. So when they, you know, solitary confinement, 24 hours, you don't come out. We got caught there. When the place is full, every Saturday you clean your room and empty your cup. From Saturday to Saturday, you when you get outside the, 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 your, your cell, prison cell, you will see people running from all the doors going towards the bathroom. And they will call 9 o'clock in the morning and take your food, put it in one flat tin plate. Put it before your door, as many people as in the cell. And the flies from the poop, from the toilet, those sitting on the, any kind of thing, mosquitoes, they will sit on your rice until 3 o'clock. 
that the true party, they say we must form party, we finish form party now, they're dealing with us. They should give us a place. After we form party, we just like them. We become organized body, a political institution. They should have treated us as brothers and welcome us. They would have controlled us better than to brutalize us. They put us in jail there. We were, I put in my paper, you will read it. I almost died from starvation. Me, me, I stay with people who got money. So I used to eat. We eat breakfast, we eat lunch, we eat dinner. Then I was, my, my bedroom to chess and play was closer to the kitchen. In the night when I wake up 3 o'clock in the morning, I go in the kitchen and eat cookies and, and drink milk. So me, I ain't have hunger. So they told me and put me inside there. No food. Eat dry rest. From three o'clock in, I put your dry food, and I, I was, I was, I was living in hygiene. I went to a boarding school that was taken care of by the government, the international community. We, we, we had, we, we were, we were trained to be civilized. And they took me and put me in jail there. I was in my own confinement. Every morning they tell me how I'm going to die. And I was uncivilized. And I didn't take it lightly. And I didn't like it even today. Uh, so. Then, 3 o'clock, first thing in the morning, 6 o'clock, they would take us out and beat us. Oh, poor Baba Matthew, he used to cry. At one time when they were beating Baba, I told them, don't give a man 25, then you gain 12. Add it to my own and give it to me. <laughs> me, my pa, native man, I used, to, I used to fall from palm trees, so my body is hot, so you can beat me. He said, no, no, the, the, the captain, the lieutenant says so, I will beat everybody 25. And you know what they used to beat us with? They took the cow, the tire of your car, they cut it and make a rope with it. This is what they used to lash us every morning. When we come outside, three o'clock after we eat the dry rest, then they gave us time, uh, four o'clock, to go and go around the prison. Go around the prison. At six o'clock, you take your beating before you go to your cell. Yes. This was supposed to be a civilized Christian government. They had these churches all year. Every Sunday they come pray. That's why I was so, But the, the problem I have, Toba was not there. Those who were the preachers and the leaders of the society, they were not the ones in the prison. They were your brothers. Country boys who were the, in the army. They didn't have to take those, that order. They didn't have to beat us. I don't remember any of them being questioned whether you beat the prisoners today. And after they, they were in the habit of beating us, they, they got tired. So that someday they don't beat you. Maybe they will beat us in the afternoon or they will beat us next tomorrow morning. So nobody was going to question them. But they carried that command out recklessly. That old African way of inflicting sorrow on your fellow man. Wish him to die. Stop him from having children. You know, old African way undemocratic. It doesn't make the society to develop. That's why I was in the soldiers. And I challenge you all, if that is in you, abandon it. We are in a new age. Strive for society, societal progress. Dwell, fight for changes, and be moderate. That is the way out now. No, the soldier didn't do it. They brutalized us. Our own people beat us. We want to change so that your children, children can take. Look at the party they got now. If I didn't put my bag there, the queer did not, Matthew did not come and say, let's organize party. Y'all won't have multi party system that you're boasting about. Every librarian want to get your own party. You have the freedom. But you know how you got it? We risk our life for it. And so it's not free, it's very expensive. While we were in jail, we suffer long. I suffer hunger. I was weak. I had malaria. I told you I was living with civil life. I was living in Anthony General Liberia. I didn't have problems about things. And my mama, who was there, who was the wife, she was mama, Manchester, was a cool woman. Y'all eat. Soon she come, y'all eat. Uh, y'all eat. No, Joe, you need to go to the hospital. Because you probably left malaria business. She would send me to the hospital. So I was coming from a good family. I was all right. And it expo exposed me to this thing. And I almost died. 
The beating alone, I still got the stripes on my butt. Excuse me. On my shoulders. Only now it stop. But every time the, the, the bruise in my body will turn to some kind of sore for many, many years after the prison. When I was standing at Justin Minister, I had sores on my back. Your minister had a lot of sores on my back from the beating. My body is so tender. I know I got my mother's skin or something. You beat me, it will turn to sore. The bruise will become a sore. So I got the mark all on my back and on my rump. It didn't have to do that. So we were in jail. They charged me, my father, Chesson, charged me with sedition, which is punishable, punishable by imprisonment. But when we got in the jail, about a few weeks after we got in the jail, they came and demanded the rate for sedition. They took it for us. I refused to give my rate. They said, oh, okay, you don't, I, I, I didn't, they, they didn't get it from me. But then that day, when I went for beating, they said, ah, hey. So they didn't play with me. They gave me more than 25 latches, and I was bleeding. So the next morning, I called him, and I said, come, huh? Get you ready. I gave it to him. Then they changed the, 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 the rate to treason. As you know, treason is punishable, is a capital crime. Punishable by death, through firing score, or by hanging. You handcuff, and you get there to open the cell, open the door, and they will juke it in your, part, in your pocket, or whatever you have. Or if you didn't have anything, they will just put it on the floor where you can sleep. We slept on the bare floor. Y'all got plenty of party in joint, let me tell you. Slept on the bare floor. The, the prison cell is ripped with mosquitoes. Unhygienic. And you know you human beings, if you don't eat every day good food, you will not, your body will not be strong to resist sicknesses and the horror on the body. You will not. So you are exposed to mosquito, yellow fever, diseases, then you are in prison, you can't eat. Then they're beating you. We die on the cross for you to have motor party system. Then you know, I see you when you're going today. I mean, I'm not going to join that party there. there. Yeah. And you, you don't, you're not dedicated. True PPP member, power member were dedicated. No, you're switched from one party to the other. So you don't even have an upbringing. And that's why you're always losing elections. If you were PPP, and PPP is called to die, then you will die. That is the way to have a system. No, if I know that this party, the men they get money, then that's the place you go. When they're cooking and eating, then you go there. Then another time again, care another ID card to repair you eating there. And they, they tell them, yeah, that's what they do. They're not committed to be to introduce a change. You have to suffer and you have to be committed. Same thing we do in our lives. You say you marry. You always leaving your woman and going born children different place. Then you say she might accept them. But she dare not have a boyfriend. Then she's a horror. The change has come. But we got to utilize the change in keeping with the details of fair play. Now, I want something for myself. While we were in jail and we received our new charge of treason, we were supposed to be taken to court on that Monday, which in my estimation from my checking, that would have been April 13, 1980. On the 12th of April, somebody, we used to have a lot of well wishes. While we were in jail, I've been hearing Many, many people went to sue sales, went to country doctors. People went outside of Liberia for us, that they should not do anything to us. Even people went to my tribe. There was a witch doctor there. They went there asking him that the children in the jail 
We don't want the people to do anything to them. Well, since they gave us treason, they announced it on their radio. They didn't hide it. That the people were recharged for treason. And my papa, uh, uh, Chesson, he was the architect of it. He was sitting there. I remember one time I, I got in confrontation with him when he served me from the Justice Department. He said, you, you, I take my time, took my money behind you, and then you have the audacity to go join all kinds of riff raff and causing all kinds of confusion. But when you get out of here, you will never forget it. That's what my father told me. And he said, you carry the man. They took, that time I had my hand behind. He was in the Department. They put my red in my pocket, and they chunked me down the steps. Those of you who never went to the Justice Department, go see there. That step is steep. They chunked me down. Mr. Wafer Clark, who was the SS commander at that time, they chunked me down the step. And they chunked me. I said, oh, my people, I will die. Oh. That was the beginning of my sorrow. And I landed with my neck. However, they put me in the trunk of the car and took me to, to prison. So, we had, had plenty of children with him. I was there in solitary, back of my people were in a solitary confinement. And they used to come to me. You, instead of going to the true party and showing penitence, and the first time I hear that word, you supposed to show penitence to the party. Then you go join this Rave Raff. You former senator, you go join these people. But your father said, I'm going to tell you, if anybody get free, it won't be you. He will tell me that. I will not say anything. I say, okay. I, I didn't have anybody here. Uh, my cousin T.A., he lived with president. He was President Tuckman's son. He got his property on Link Street here. He's a bluff boy. He didn't even care. So he stopped sending me food. So we begin to eat food in the prison. Some of the boys that were there, they were lucky. Their people used to send food there. But those of us, we didn't have anybody. Nobody gave us food. And the suffering was too much. We were like slaves. When you are charged with crime, that doesn't render your condition as a citizen to be a slave. They kept us and treated us like slaves. All because we wanted another party different from the true party. And that was the law required. We still have election laws that provide for motor party system. And all we wanted to do, after they educated us and show us the, the new society, we wanted to be participants. We wanted to be equals. We wanted to take part in the new system from our villages, from our tribes. We didn't really want to cause trouble but they treated us as criminals. We were not convicted, but they had relegated us to death. On the night, on the morning of April 12, 1980, somebody shouted outside the post stocking, and they called, Chipuo, Jaiyo, Abofano Pleyao, I'm a free guy. It says, Chipo, Chipo, Kuya, Kuya, you may not be afraid. The Finney killing Toba, you will be free tomorrow. There was around about, oh, I, I would say between four and five in the morning. But for some reason, and this is what I usually do, if I rested today, during the weekend, and I sleep, then to, tonight, or I slept, I mean, I slept all during the day yesterday, so now I get weak, and the week now I took it from the prison. So when I get weak, then me, I go home, I just sleep, forget everything, money, this thing, me, I go, I tell my mom, I, I tire, I just go sleep. When I sleep all through the day, then I sleep in the night again, around about 2 o'clock, I will get up. I won't sleep again until day. So I was up that morning. I heard that cry, speaking cry, sapo language. Then Kuya came to his cell door. Chipo, Chipo, counselor, counselor, 
I, I said, why are you hiring my name like that? <laughs> why are you hiring my name like that? I can hear crown too. Why are you calling me? Say, oh, you heard it. I said, I heard it, man. You don't mean you come on come. Call my name in the prison like this. Yeah, because I was scared. They killed a man, the poor can. Then he called my name. They said, yeah, I'm one of the people there. You know. So, so, so anyway, we, we always laugh about it. And so so uh, we stayed there. That morning, I mean, then they started shooting. I, I said, what? Then I called him. I would say him when I called me. Then I said, queer? 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 He said, oh, man, what do you say? <laughs> in, in, in essence, he is saying, Hey, sir, when I call you, name, you call him my name. I said, But I hear shooting. He said, Yeah, che. I hear shooting too. Me, I was afraid that the soldiers, under the circumstances, they would walk in the plane and just shoot us down. So I was very much afraid. Until 6 o'clock that morning, when they brought the pickup, they free everybody except me. Queer, back of my all those boys. They got in the truck and they were taken to the brigade. While they were on their way, a certain fellow in the army, I don't see him these days, he came looking, I guess he came to see if somebody leave, if we left anything, that's what he can take. Because today I don't see my six dollar what I had on my mat. Uh, yeah. I didn't see the, the base prayer that my girlfriend then, Musu, sent to me. I, I, I never seen it. I went in the barrel there asking for it, they said they didn't see it. But that fellow came there. He was armed. And he said, well, Mr. Chipo, oh, Che, you, did they free you? Yeah. I said, okay. So he took his gun butt and bust the lock and said, go. So I ran behind the truck. Yo, wait, wait, wait. One of the prisoners coming. Yo, wait, wait, wait. I jumped in the back of this truck. When we got to the street there in the barrel by that church, they said, okay, Baba Matthew, Oscar Quia, Che Chipo, Joy Bully. Y'all go to the y'all go to the brigade. So they took us. Me, I said, why again? I asked Queer. Queer name you remember. I said, my people, why is this again? The queer said, I mean, I don't know, Chipo. I don't know. I said, hey, put say we're free again. And, and that man had a last name, said we'll be free. Then he said, we'll go brigade to those soldiers. I said, okay. I didn't trust the soldiers. And they beat those are the same people who are beating us. They didn't have any mercy to their own people with, with us. Then they said, we must go to their main office to be there. So I had a problem. I was afraid. Anyway, we had to go there. When we got there, we were there for a while. Then they sent for us to the mansion. When we used to demonstrate, have meetings, talk about change in Liberia, sometimes some of our friends used to say, the only way change will come here in this country unless there's a bloodshed. Some people used to say that. So when I walked in the front of the mansion that morning, I saw blood on the front step in the mansion. Human blood. Then I knew what. For truth. This is what people were talking. But I was afraid. I saw other people brought blood. And so you might imagine I was worried about my own blood. But it was too late. I was already inside. We were fully inside. So they took us to the veranda, uh, what you call it, Sangana House, uh, behind the mansion. And Do told us, well, me, I heard the name Do, me, I thought a crewman. Because in Kipamas, most of the people, when we were growing up, who were Do, were all crew people. I didn't know that crewman would be Do. So when they said Do, I thought showed our, our you know, crewman. But when I go see, I saw the cram, and I can hear cram very well. My mother is cram. So uh, he said, I call you because the people said they were going to kill us, and we already finished digging grave for you. One grave for every one of you. They were supposed to, they were take, they were supposed to take you to uh, court for treason. We say, yeah, we will charge for treason. Okay. They were going to carry you to court, and they were going to find you guilty. And they say, we must dig the grave. We already finished digging the grave. One grave for all of you. So we didn't like that. That's the reason why we took arm to overthrow the government. But now you're the one who know both. So you come to help us to make paper to, to make the government. I said, all right. He said, all right. All right. So they put us in a post wagon. 
Me, I was not happy in the way they were carrying us around. I can't trust them. So we got in the, I said, well, uh, they, I said, but then, okay, y'all go, then y'all come. He said, my man, get inside. Ah, they think starting again. So, okay. <laughs> uh, they think we go through. So, anyway, we were crying up, you know, Volkswagen. All of us were in the back back there. Me, George Bullet, big, Bacchus, big, Kriya, bigger than me. All of us were crying in the back. I think Bacchus was sitting in the front. But no, there was a soldier in the front armed. So, we all crying up in the back of the Volkswagen, and they said, the, the leader of the coup called us. Huh? They like taking you to prison cell again. So we got there, got before the mansion. They opened the door, we got down. And I saw this blood before the mansion. Then they took us through the mansion, went to the back door, and door delivered his message. So all we did, where Sam was there, first we started with door. Later on, where Sam came. Later on, Podia came. Every colleague came. All of them gathered there. Then shooting began intense. So those sent Kwali, because he had that time the guy more Lufa people in the army. So he sent Kwali uh, to go see what was going on. Uh, uh, Jerry Batu for the Gyo people. He went out there. And uh, so we were left with, po with, with uh, Podia went for the crew people uh, and the Grebo and other people there. So we had Do was there and where Sam was there. And they detected to us what they had decided when they had the overthrow. When we were in jail, the only message I used to get is that, uh, from a soldier, was that if anybody got free in that prison, I wouldn't be the one. And my, it used to be my stepfather always telling my, 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 my man who read me. I know your civil people, you call it stepfather, or what kind of father? Stepfather is your, your mother, husband, and so. Well, the man who read you, how do you call foster father? My foster father used to send that message to me that if I get free, people get free from the prison from this incident, I won't be the one. So, I, we, I didn't have any contact with soldier. I don't remember the PPP having any contact with soldier. People gave us money when we were doing our politics. Me, I know. Chief Justice Pierre used to give us money. I also know one of the persons in the true party used to give us money. They sent it to us. Because why? We used to go around looking for donation when we were doing that. And they gave us money. So really, there was not a personal enmity between we, between us as a group and the older people. There were some people in the true party had your money in the government, high up in government, who saw that Maybe it was all right for us to do what we're doing. Yeah, there were tragedy here and there. They suffered bad name because of the way they treated us as a government. But there were people in us, even Tobo himself. After the Res Riot, Tobo called a meeting. He offered us to join the government after we organized. He had good intention. But he was with a system. And he had to do as the system already planned. That's why we were sent to jail. We set up taking orders. Jai Kuya, I know where he learned tapping from. He could type. Baka Matthew uh, was a spokesman for us, then he was a chairman. Me, I was a lawyer in organizing the PRC government. George Bully didn't have much to say, he was just there. So, don't say why well, you put my name down. In first, what thing will be the name uh, 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 of the government? Is it Liberian, new Liberian government? Yeah, Baka said, no. Let's call it the People Redemption Council. He said, write it down. We are typing. <laughs> then, then, he said, okay. So, and I... Samuel K. Do, I will be the president. Baka said, no, a, a revolutionary president, a, a person, leader cannot be president. So you are chairman of the council. He said, all right, put it down. Chairman of the council and head of state. He said, put it down. We are topic. That the people who are inside now, so listen. So then he said, all right. 
So now, let's go to the cabinet ministers. He said, no. Then we, uh, uh, a suggestion came. I don't know specific, specifically who it came from. But he said, no, the first thing you need to do, send is a military government. You need to quickly reorganize your military barracks and detachment all throughout the country. Put the people there that you know to take over because anything can happen. So they say, OK. Then those say, he started appointing people in all the barracks around the country. This person that is there, he's here by remove. We're doing it on the radio. We organize the government on the radio. Uh, ELBC. And ELBC said they ain't got nothing to do. They were there because they were the ones who were talking. So they changed the barracks. I mean, the, the leadership of the barracks and put their own people in those barracks that they knew that they were the leaders. Then they went ahead and appointed leadership of the army. And he was uh, head of state commander-in-chief and uh, chairman of the People's Redemption Council. Uh, they finished, then he appointed the cabinet minister. Bole was to be minister of foreign affairs. Bakal Mafi was supposed to be working with him as a chairman, as a minister of state for presidential affairs. Uh, Oscar was minister of the interior. Then lastly, those say, Chipo, and you are minister of justice. Jalada. I said, oh, <laughs> what can I tell you? Yeah, our Minister of Justice of the of PAL, our Minister of Justice and Attorney General. So now they gave me Minister of Justice and Attorney General job. I said, all right, thank you, sir. To tell you how the soldier treated us from his very guy, yeah, they saved our life, they made coup. We didn't go to court, they free us. But dealing with them, let me tell you how self-interest became a, a problem with the PRC government. They sent to the bank, they say no money, and it's uh, so suggestion came out. I think it was me. Oh. I said, but call the call the bank, the national bank, they got plenty of money in their chief. Uh, and, and, and so he said, yeah, so they called this man. I don't know what clerk. Somebody was bank government at the time. Huh? Green. Green, eh? green. Oh, green, 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 the the boy from Sino. So green, they sent for green on the radio to come there. Green came running. He said, okay, go to the central bank. You'll get money there. He said, yes, sir. How much? Five million dollars. He said, okay, go bring the money. Go bring some money. They brought the money. I think they brought out the 450,000 U.S. dollars. You know how much they give Bath Matthew? That time we had rope, they cut our heads. They had a rope. That's why they do thieves. When they cut rope, they cut your hair in prison, in central prison. They did it to her, even though we were political prisoners. Professional people, economists, lawyers. Uh, you know, they just treated us like criminals. So they had the rules. So those say, all right, some of you organizing the government, y'all go home. And uh, but I said, well, but we ain't got nothing. We won't go call our head. Those gave us, and that four hundred dollar, huh? Two hundred out of the the poor guy who showed the poor five million, <laughs> and, and they start eating it. Then they gave us only two hundred dollars. We sold on our back. We needed to go take injection. All I wanted. We are not eating. Me, I don't know where I was staying again because uh, the room where I was renting, I don't know. I think the poor put me out because they didn't want trouble. You see? So the man gave only $200. We divided, I don't know, 50 50 or something. Before we went to uh, down the PHP way there, and I pay your call PHP down there. We are where your shop was. Jalatan Road. We went down there. And we were able to get somebody to call our hair. And so I took my fifty dollar. I had just started my house. I moved in my house without doors, without with what it in tiles. And I slept in there. And every time I walk, I used to come to the progressive movement. The wind blow through the house and I begin to get cough in my throat because of the dust. So the whole while I was in prison, I said, Well, when I leave from here, if I ever leave because in prison, I can't leave from here, but if I go me, I will Rebuild my house, put the put doors there. I used to, when I was sleeping in a cell all by myself, I said I will put doors there. I will get my friend Jomaya to give me some tile. The man who I went to jail for, who they say I, I put somebody out because of him. They were having a tile tire factory, a building is still there in Jamaica Road there. I said I will ask him to give me tile so I can fix my house. I put you know, put it in my house. So I went home. My brother then, 
Yeah, man, brown, brown here. They send a man, sister, it has sent a man, say, they say, your brother in jail. But right now, now if, so you go to Monrovia to be there. So brown king, brown was there in my house. When I got there, oh, brown where my wash. He couldn't come for my wash. I had a problem with that. Other people were living in my house today, all kinds of things there. Anyway, the next morning, I minister of justice, I went to work. The question was, oh, then they were arresting people. Uh, arresting other person. Go to this house. When they meet girl, fine girl. You know your Congo girl, how they can be fine. They're all bright, nice, tall. They're well fed, well taken care. They speak nice English. Their voice soft and nice and, and low. You know, yeah, the Congo children, they were very nice. And uh, so when the soldier get there, tell her how they treated us in jail. In the presence of the man, they will rape the woman, the wife, the mother, and rape the daughters right before the man. If you thought they will kill you, that's what they were doing. And every day making complaint, complaint, complaint. That, 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 that kind of thing was too rough. And it was too dangerous. So say so what to do. So we had a security meeting. I was in charge of all the security. Call NSA, PDN, police director, and all the other people I called at meeting. And uh, to have control over the, the police. I, made my, uh, uh, I took the position of Minister of Justice. Minister of Justice is Lieutenant General of the Liberian Police Force. That was this time I hear Minister of Justice, I will tell the police. No! Command the police! You don't tell them. You, the Lieutenant General of the Liberian, that is a high position in the police force. Lieutenant General, Commander in Chief of the police force. Police force is the first uh, uh, offensive front of the government. Cohesive front, not procedural, cohesive front of the government. So just a minister will be here, then your guy, it's an armed robber, and they say, well, I'm, whoa, I'm robber in my town. You will not make it. You will not make it. We restore law and order in this country that you can drive here and go. After the, the soldier told that they were in power and they were doing all kinds of things. So we grab seven, seven people and put them on the firing squad. We had a meeting, our chairman of John Security, right there in the department there, on, on, on what is it, that, that Lane Street, yeah? All right. Is that Lane Street down there? Oh, you all know the place where the Department of Defense is? That Lane Street, the Department of Defense is still there. Who went there, huh? that Benson Street? Yeah, okay, yeah, thank you. Benson Street. We had a security, we said, well, soldiers who do things like that will go by the military code. You shoot and kill without command, the penalty is death. We're not going to have that here. So we passed the law. They were still raping people, breaking houses, taking their things. And we couldn't have, so we put seven people on the firing squad right there at the post stacking. They cut off. If I had anything to do, you might just give me one week. I dare them. That first day I was spent in the Ministry of Justice, if I ever had a chance, there would not be an robber here. Because I would, the first person I catch as an robber, I would make an example of him. You have to enforce the law in order to maintain law. There's nothing nice about it. Crime is crime is punishable by whatever measure the, 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 the law imposes. So we stop the looting and the killing. And in six months, you could take your car and go as far as to Lofa. Got the soldiers were everywhere. They would leave their camp. They start looting, raping women, doing all kinds of things, killing people. When we did that here in Morovia, they quieted the place and there were law and order. All right. Coming to the execution and what I did as Minister of Justice. What I did as Minister of Justice was to restore law and order. The one when the soldier took over, they thought that they were in command and therefore soldiers can do anything. No. We have a civil government. We have a constitutional, we have a government. A national government, rather. And no lawlessness here. And we got laws. We were born in a family of organized people. We are citizens of the Republic of Liberia and we are a government. We say that we come here for a change and we say the change that we made 
were to remove a despotic government, a system that was not embracing the entire citizenry of the country. And we have to make a difference. We're not going to do the same thing they did. People might have justice here. And people might know that there's a change here. They will feel the change in their lives and how they are treated. That was my stance in the Ministry of Justice. Now, another man would sit down, go kill my foster father. Me, I know every time Chesson send message in the jail that he tell him if anybody get free, he will not be the one. Me, I know he was getting in contact with me to make sure I was there. And not that he really hit me. Because Chesson could have said, okay, the man. And not anything, nothing would have happened. Who would ask Chesson? He could have told me, told the people, say, when you go, you get rid of the man. He would just take me somewhere, and that would be finished with. But the way he used to always, Captain Howard always used to come and bring that message, I know my father's Chesson used to ask how, how I was doing in there. At that time, he used to call me Joe Chesson because he said I'm going to be Joseph J. Chesson, the third. So he used to call me Joe. Well, my mom called me. I was Christian on the eighth day of my birth with the Assembly of God Church. They called me Job, J-O-B, because my mom said she had problem having me. So I called Job. So the man would call me Job. Yes, pa, come bring this. Come do that. So Chesson really didn't have anything. He didn't have, you know, uh, why you say fish to fry? He didn't hit me. He knew I was in that jail, and he was concerned. That's why you always tell Captain Howard, to go tell him if anybody get free, he won't be the one. To, to find out whether I was still there. So he didn't have anything personal against me. And when we were in jail, we never saw Chesson. He never sent any orders. He never said anything to me. The only thing he told me in Justice Department, you got the, the, the audacity to go join all these riffraff, and, and you, will not, you, you, will not, you will not be able to tell the story. I'm not, he, he told me that I was always going to be living and telling the story, as I do now, as my father told me. I will be always telling the story. So Chesson, I didn't have any animosity against him. He didn't hit me. My judgment told me, if the man care about you, he won't send it. So I didn't even believe it. Sir. When the man talking, I said, well, my part there, I don't think anything will happen to me. So I didn't have anything personal against him. And I knew. Torba took my hand and made me senator. I didn't have any problem. I would never, God know, I did not connive with anybody to go kill Torba. I was behind bars in solitary confinement when I heard that Tobo was murdered. I have no dealing. Let God strike me. I'm going to see what I'm looking for. If I ever took part in murdering President Tobo, I never talked to nobody. While I was Minister of Justice, the soldiers, let me tell you how we didn't take, we didn't have any order any power over the military. We were just like pawns in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the in the water. When we took over our Minister of Justice, but the decision was made by the People Redemption Council. The People in Redemption Council were critically selected in that those who participated in the in the coup at the mansion. Those soldiers that were there, that cooperated and provided the arms. Those soldiers who knew about the coup and did not leak the secret out. Those were the ones that were picked to be in the People's Redemption Council. This coup was staged, according to historical knowledge, for, by only seven people. One of them died. Isn't that right, Kuya? I think that was the case. One died. That one of the hardest or unknown soldiers. They made a decision. God be my helper. I'm standing here. My life is in the hands of the master of all masters. I didn't see any of my members in jail. The soldier didn't have, we didn't emulate the soldiers. In other words, we were not friendly with them because they beat us. And we hate them because they beat us. You know, every, every money you beat somebody. And these were Gyo people. These were Loma people. These were our own people. They didn't have to beat us the way they did. 
So me, I, ain't got, I didn't have real regard for them. I, I feared them. I didn't trust them. So I didn't see anybody communicating. And the PPP people, the, the, the power people, when Bagel Mafia appointed me a lawyer, they always consulted me. Even when the riot was going on, when they wanted to have the, the, the march, we decided to have a peaceful march as a, as, a, as, a, as a notice that we didn't like the fact that President Tobo didn't want to bring the price down. And we got information President Tobo was a, a businessman. He was selling rice. And he was a distributor of rice. He was a supplier and a major distributor of rice. The importer, rather. Importer, major importer and distributor. He was a businessman. Recently, I went to Vanjima and I was able to see the sprawling rubber plantation of Torbo. Houses all everywhere. Only thing they have no roof, and I don't know why somebody is not taking care of the estate. Because the estate was returned to the family. But they abandoned that wealth in the midst of the African jungle there. So Torbo was a businessman. And we didn't see why he could not reduce the price. So my advice was we should have a people march. They consulted me. It was me who advised them to go ahead and have a peaceful march. But it was not a march with knives to destroy things. No. In fact, at first, there were young people. Yeah, they were in the new system. We wanted to demonstrate. We wanted to let people know we were in the new thing. We could stand up and say no to government and this and that. That was all. We were not violent. We didn't destroy any property. We did not cause any problem. But as other boys in the street corners and girls saw the group of young people marching and going and, and staging, they joined. They were not even members. People who died there were not even registered members of, of PAL. These were just young people coming. Some people were sitting on the porch. They got killed when the police opened fire. PPP at the time, we changed the name from PAL, Progressive Alliance of Liberia, to Progressive People's Party. Baka is the one who always given the name. So it became Progressive People Party. Progressive People Party did not connive to bring chaos in the society. We just wanted to have a peaceful march. And I, as their lawyer, my judgment was peaceful protest is permissible under the law. Freedom of assembly is part of our constitution. And if you don't want anything publicly, you want to send notice to government, you can have a free march. I saw that in America. Yes, they will arrest you and put you in jail. But the penalty is not death, and the charges are not treason. But because we march in our own streets as taxpayers, as peaceful citizens, they charge us with treason, promise to take us to court, and they already dug our grave, according to Samuel K. Doe. Peace be to his arches. And let me tell you, the same way where I talk about the brutality of our army, Prince Johnson was with, 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 with Doe. When they stayed, they could Prince Johnson then where the gear boys in the army. He will grab Doe to the port there without any penitence. He will go and go to kill a man. That's how the army was. And that army got to be reformed. The approbation of the army is wrong. They don't even understand what the army is supposed to be for. The army is supposed to be for the protection of citizens, not to wrought brutality on them. That's why, that how our army was. That's how it has been, and that's how it is today. That's why when people are talking about reshuffling, doing this, doing that, and carrying them, pushing them around, me, I like it. Huh? Because they got to bear some penalty too. And when time came for the Civil War, the same army, instead of defending us, they were training rebels and looting our properties. The same army that were on salary. We need to reform our military. Not just training how to shoot and defend the country. We've got to instill morals, good morals in them. Military people, people who vow to defend the country, the lives and property of the country. They are supposed to be sane, religious, 
and very, very considerate individuals. Our army not like that. So we didn't connive with them. Me, I hated the army. Y'all will tell them I hate them. Unless I will never, a people did not connive with those people. That man who, poor who got so on my back, I will go connive with them to go kill somebody. What, do you know those people beating you? You will go tell them, the will go kill president, they will kill you. First thing they will go tell the president, say, the, the people in the jail, they say, we must do so, 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 so. We're not able to do it. We're dangerous to attempt to do that. But we were already afraid, afraid of being charged with treason, scheduled to be trial. We we'll had the, the in fact, so yeah, they not deal with us. They deal, deal with us as criminals. They beat us and then they leave us. Now, when one soldier walk in his cell, in post stocking, everybody turn quiet because they will just say, "Open this cell, put everybody outside, and teach you a lesson." Next time, be in the prison and made noise. I saw it. So we were not, they were not, they were not our friends. We were enemies. They were agents of the, of the power structure. They were agents of our exploiters. So we didn't trust them. So PPP did not connive with the army. In no way, we did not. At least nobody asked me for legal advice. And everything that PPP did, they always asked me. I was their lawyer. From the very day I walked in their midst, they did not connive with any army. I would have been consulted. Because I always tell them that it's not legal. They already think it's not legal. Me, I will not do it. I don't support it. And back up a sense of responsibility. We say, well, send a lawyer say it's not legal, then we will not do it. That's how we are running our, our party. And it's not legal for backers to walk without calling the Central Committee meeting, for him to walk in on the radio station and tell us that the the name of PPP for which we got beaten and suffered for, the name now is changed to United People Party. Without calling a meeting and having a vote on it. And we say we want a democracy, freedom of choice, participatory democracy. And we have a party and have a hierarchy there. The chairman will just jump on and go on radio and change the party name and change its direction. So we are then when we back up, they are in the UPP. Me, I still got my Progressive People's Party. I pay my own rent by myself. That is the party for which I have scars on my back. I'm a man of principle. And I don't just follow a leader when I know you're wrong. So I didn't follow them. So you got UPP and you got PPP. PPP is the UPP. Things had to be correctly. So just to let you know that we did not connive, we were strict people. I was a justice minister, and I know Riff Raff. I was a leader in my own right. I was a lawyer, a married man with children, a responsible man. I was a church lawyer. I was baptized in my church. Today, I'm still the lawyer of the Liberia Assembly of God Church. Our church is right down the street here. I'm not a, some kind of Riff Raff floating in the street, don't know what I'm doing. No, I had the opportunity to be taught what to do as a sane and, 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 and lawful, law-abiding person. I would never have a knife to go murder people. That's not me. I even had a problem when they came. A.B. A.B. was my friend. But if you okay the father, the son is not responsible for the president's action. He's not the president. Unless you kill all the legislators, why go grab the poor man from the embassy and go kill him? I had gone on a security mission in Zwedru when I came back. I said, oh, last night, every uncle did then some people. Mm -mm -mm. I said, but the, the head of state knows it. Yeah, but I didn't want to decide it. They had a cliche in the People Redemption Council. Those people who actually went to the mansion and fought to kill Tobo, they had a clique. Tell the hard truth, but they had a clique. They are the ones who were giving the orders. Now let me tell you what they feared. These people got money, they are known internationally, and they are educated more than us. If we allow them to stay around, they will overthrow us. They will catch us and punish us by death. Tell the how they want to do the people who want form party. So let us get rid of them. That was their approbation, that was their decision. 
They, your army that you trained, that you financed, that you supported, that you took to beat us and guide us until you're ready to kill us. The army you took to dig, they say he took part in digging our mass grave in shuffling. That the very man came and overthrew your government. I ain't got no part to do with it. My part I played was to form another party, which I know was my right. The election law says you can form a political party when you get 300 registered voters. When I want to form a party, I have 50,000 voters all over the country. I'm not a murderer. My people know me in my village. Mama know I'm a just man. When we got one piece of meat, Mama asked me to divide it. Because my brother Johnson, the older one, will always take the meat and eat it. And we'll make complaint to our mom. They will say, no, we'll give it to Che. Then let Che divide it. I will divide the meat. I have a sense of justice from my birth. The house that I was in, we were plenty. And so we learned how to deal with people. We have feeling for people. I ain't just come here from nowhere. I am not a, a, a bastard, excuse me to say that. I come from an organized family, a Christian family. I told you already that I was Christian on the eighth day of my, of my birth, on the altar, and surrounded to Christ. And since that time, I've been a Christian. I just knew Joe Sam, uh, Mr. Samson. You didn't have to be a devout Christian to be Samson. So when I was writing from law school, there were all kinds of names. I was Samson, Joe Samson. Then I came to be Chesson. Then I was just tired with all the, what, Who am I really? <laughs> I was tired with all this change. And I took the Chesson name as a business decision. The man said he will not help me to go B W I and support me unless I take his name. So I would take his name and get support. And I did. And they sent me abroad. That was a business decision. Now that I got the education, I paid the price. I carried the name for that time. Does that mean I have to continue? No, when I was graduating, say, what name do you want on your diploma, on your degree? I say, put there, Che Chipo. My grandfather's name is Che. The, the man, I say, fought the war for us. They named me after one of the farmers, great farmer in our family. He named Che, he named Chipo. Che, no, no, your bobo. If you go in my yard now, you'll see all the palm trees. Chipo under the palm trees. Way back, great, great, great grandfather, he had a plantation. Sugar cane, coconut, palm nut plantations. And he had so many wives and had all kinds of children. Many, many children, mostly daughters. And they married all throughout the life, throughout the community. And they say, the history say, what they used to do is that when this girl got pregnant or she got problem, she would go to her father and say, Papa, we ain't got food in our house where I come for rice. Then Che would take rice and say, you give her rice. But when you say you won't care palm nut, you won't care sugar cane, you won't care banana, you will say, no, 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 I got plenty of children. You say you can't hear for rice. So you just give her rice, you not care. If you care anything from there other than rice that you ask for, then maybe you steal it, you will not get it. My grandfather, great great grandfather, had principle. That same principle is in me. Either the thing is right, or it's not right. If it is not right, you will not get people to do it. I'd rather go hungry. Me, I'd rather be without nothing. I'd rather drive my old pickup. I'd rather walk. I'd rather be called nothing than to bring myself down for wealth or for anything. So I didn't have a place in this society. This society is a society in which people are imbued with the idea of having self-wealth. I aspire to a, a wealthy nation, not individual with uh, nation, uh, uh, wealth. I aspire to national wealth. If I am able to feed myself, I want my neighbor to be able to feed himself. If I am riding a car, I want my neighbor to ride a car. Things that are justice are fair and just. That's the thing I do. That's why when I walk in your Supreme Court, I saw people were selling justice. Justice is not something to sell. 
when Mama tells you say go divide the fish, she meant that everybody should get equal piece of it. Now you taking the greater part of it, attached to the hay and the boom, then you still take flesh and put it one side for yourself. Then after you finish dividing it, then you, you finish eat that little piece, then you alone eat the hay with the boom, with everything. No, that's not justice. You divide a fish, so you take only the head, the bone there with flesh on it, you give it to somebody else at his part. That's how I learned to be justiciable. I'm not a murderer. I tell you anything I want to tell you. If I have to curse you, I will curse you. But I will not kill you. I never plan murder. The only thing I did was to see to it that we have another party. I didn't like the discrimination I saw here where certain people thought they were better than other citizens. Citizens should be equal. All of us have equal rights. That's why we got a document called Constitution. All of our rights are provided for, honored, and protected by that law. There shouldn't be wealthy people and poor people. There shouldn't be a government official and just citizens who follow along. Unless those citizens contribute in picking those people and nominating and crowning them to be their leaders. But you don't impose yourself on others. The true party government had left for 100 years already before I got here, before I even went to school, before I got to know about justice, uh, not justice, but before I got to know about organized government. They were here, they built no roads, they didn't build highways, and they always used to go to America. They used to go to Europe. They saw the streets that the people built there. They saw the hospital. They saw the transient societies that they saw when they visited. But when they come to Africa, right here in this town, they, everything was right here in this town. They didn't care to expand their power. Our territory should be bigger than what it is now. Because we were the first here on this West Coast to have civilized government. No, they were narrow. They made laws for the few settlers. They provided opportunity for few settlers when they could have built an African empire. Our nation could have extended from here to Nigeria. The Republic of Liberia. We had we are the first people here. It's just a lazy man going to a, a land that nobody owns. And you just build a small hut and make a small farm. People know you can grow food there and you can stay there. So they just come and take all the land around you and you don't even protest. The settler came and took all the land. Even my father, when he went to France, six months he was there negotiating. Most of our land was given to France. And they say it, was, it happened so because there was change of money. So during my lifetime, bribery was still a problem here. Self-interest, putting self-interest over national priorities. I am not a killer, my people. I will tell you what I will. And people scared of me. I am just a small little man. I am not a bad man. I would never plan to kill anybody. They got my name all over the place. I plan to kill the man who hey, you killed me. Oh God, you know that's not true. That is not true. I never plan to kill anybody. I did not plan a coup. I didn't know anybody who planned a coup. I was in jail and been beating on a coup of court. I am not a maker. I didn't kill my father. And they got that thing behind me, so now I lay in my bed. I don't know how to get out of this scandal. So I'm happy today for you to call me to air out my view on this matter. And all I can do is ask God to judge me. If I kill Chesson, if I plot to overthrow the Liberian government, other than just advising people as a lawyer to, 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 to get another party in keeping with the law, anything that I do for God in a public manner, with all the Christians, each of you have a right to pray. I may not see it. I may not see heaven. They must send me to hell. If I ever plan 
to overthrow the government by force of arm and kill people. If I ever plan to execute anybody, I may not see heaven. I'm telling, I don't see God that you are see. Many of you will go in many places, counties, villages, and whatnot in houses. I am saying to you, if I change people, plan a coup to kill people. If I plan to execute people, some of the people who were instrumental in helping me to be where I am, then I will not go to heaven. My service to God must be in vain. I swear before my maker. That's not my work. My work was to enforce justice. If the law says we can have a party and we're not able to fit in your party, you all remember how the people in, uh, 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 impeach me uh, by resolution. I went to court and, 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 and uh, ousted somebody by the decision of the court because you had no business in the people. You're not working with them, then you can't stay on their property. Then they say, I went to, that was unbecoming of a senator. Senators are lawyers in this country. Richard Henry, the Speaker of the House for many years, he was a lawyer. He has a law firm. All of you know about Richard Henry law firm. Frank Tower had a law firm. They were lawyers for all the companies that were here in the country. Then they would say, I want to go and win on one case. Therefore, they will expel me from Senate. That they needed to be changed. They needed an opposition. And all I did was to make my services available to see that happen. Uh, I told you, you're tired with me, eh? Oh. Yeah, I know, but uh, they, that's not it. We're here now. This is the PRC. I see you're asking questions all kinds of ways. So I'm going to talk all kinds of ways, inclusively. So excuse me for that. You call me here, and I'm here. Lend me your ears, please. All right. So when we were in office at Minister of Justice, God be my helper. I came from lunch. I think I went to lunch on Broad Street. There was a Lebanese man, he said my friend on Randall Street now. I went there to eat. When I came back, I think it was around four o'clock in the evening. The woman that I met in the office, Irene, she's in the state now. I don't know whether she's still alive. She was secretary for Chesson. When I got there, she thought I was going to fire her. I said, no, she was there because she was very proficient. Uh, uh, so I uh, kept him there. When I walked in my office from lunch, he came to me and said, oh, counselor, the people say they are executing people. I said, I said, yeah. So I took the police radio. I said, this is Unit 1. Central, tell me, is there execution going on at the police, at, at the barrier? He said, yeah, chief. They have finished executing four people already. The other people have been tied on the pole. That's how I heard about the execution. And every day each of you pray. Go and pray to your God. If I took part in making that decision, in firing those people, I will not see God. And my suffering will begin on this earth. Yeah, I'm not in government, but I'm well provided for. But well, God bless me. Mama say, when my brother and sister want anything, they will come in my house. It means I will provide. I have to have it to give them. I have to have matches to give my brother and sister. So Mama already gave me blessing. I don't suffer for anything. I'm a professional, experienced lawyer. Right now, I'm doing something to call legal services, legal aid society. Some people come to me and they don't pay. If you come to me, you get the money. I say, Chief Chibu is not a cheap lawyer. You may not retain me. You're not able to retain me. Or uh, why you call, you know, I get retainer. She every month, you give me five, three hundred. I want my king to me, say, I want you to be the lawyer. I look all around, see nobody. I say, you able to pay me? I don't take retainer, Chibu. That thing, three hundred, three fifty. No. You're going to pay me more money because I put my name, my stamp on it. Che Chibu. When people hear it, if put care before any judge. You know the person coming before them. So they will give you justice, and I will demand that you get justice. That's not my doings. 
I have nothing to do with it. God knows. I didn't kill my father. If anything, I wish Chesson well. Chesson did not hate me. He didn't believe, make me to believe that he hate me. Because when I was in prison, as Minister of Justice, he always asked about me. And the man always come to tell me that your father said you will not get I think he just wanted to. As Minister of Justice, he can't be asking for a prisoner in the high is. No, me they will say, oh, the man guy, you might he the one pumping the children. So he had to talk, talk on away. And that when I may get free, people get free from that place, he will not be, he wanted to, he will not get free. And the man will come and tell me. So Jason didn't hate me. So I would not have gone and planned for people to go execute him. It's not my job. It's not my work. And somebody say, I'm going to go ahead with the issue. That is the issue. People tell me, I killed my step, my foster father for power. That's not true. When my, fa my foster father was killed, I already had power. I was the chief of security in this town. When they're shooting down Clara Town or West Point, I will go and say, all right, you shooting. This is Minister of Justice, Anthony General Labira, Chechipo. If you shoot and kill me, I'm walking to you. I will kill your ma, your pa, your children, your grandpa. So I'm coming there to you now. If you know where I know, surrender your weapon. And I will walk to the bed and the man will, yeah, you don't want somebody to kill your children, your wife, your mom, your pa, your, you don't want that. So he will, the man, the soldier, son, I'm mostly drunk or on a drug. He will come and get his, his gun to me. So I used to disarm people around here. I'm not a murderer. I'm a man who enforces justice. I didn't think we should be sent to jail for treason. I didn't think they should have prepared to kill us. I didn't think that the soldiers should have taken arm. Let God be the judge. So I am saying, maybe to save my life, God decided to inspire other people to do what was done. But it's not my maker. If my maker did it, then you can't blame me. As you know, as Christians, you know God will always succeed. The, that the, of the plans of man. So if God say God would do it, it took place. It happened. Let us not go back to the old days. Put in blame wrongly. Let us take the responsibility as a people. What happened in our nation, we should move forward so it will never happen again. Train our soldiers so they will dare not take gun against their masters in office. That's what I want Liberian people to do. To bring people. If you blame me, sir, even just now, grab me and put me on a firing squad. It will not solve the problem. You're not coming to bring the people back. You're not coming to do nothing. So false blame will not help you. And it looks like that church people, man, can't even get old. He always, he, I'm very strong. I can run from here with you to the mansion. I'm not going now. I'm going to be here. You're going to help me to deal with I will be a fellow citizen, and I will always stand for justice as usual. I know right now you won't get me in your government. That doesn't mean anything. I should be able, at my age, to sustain myself. I ain't got to be working in government all my life. I got more food on my table than people who work in the government because the salary is low. So, I'm not a murderer. What the PRC did was their own... Let me tell you the story, which I didn't know about, about organizing the government. When we got there that day at the mansion, first before they come and call us, I told Baka, me, I don't want to go. And I know, I know very well, Mr. Kuya probably will remember, when Baka said, well, you know, that is the wrong thing to do now. Because if we are found disobeying the soldiers, they will develop a problem with us. And you remember now, uh, uh, these people have in jail to be tried for treason before now they release us. We can't be found disobeying the people. So I think we should go to the barrack. I felt my own legal opinion on that matter was, you go overthrow your government and kill people, you go run your government, just let me go home. Let me go home, because if I associate with you, People will blame me, just like they're doing now. But the backers say, no, we can't be found disobeying the soldiers. So let's go. 
So we went to the mansion. When we got there, they told us how, who was supposed to be head of state, who was supposed to be what. The only thing he didn't know, the nomenclature in law and the proper English. We told him you can call your group People Redemption Council. The person who had it, he can be head of state and chairman of that council. This other thing can do this. You can set up the same structure of government. You can have ministers to work under the chairman of the council. The cha and you can have legislature. The, the People Redemption Council will be the legislature. You can have your Supreme Court. Yeah, the first Supreme Court justice that was appointed called Mr. Uh, uh, what his name? Balaze. I the one appointed Balaze. Hear me here. Yeah, I have power during the PRC. But I did not use my power vainly. I did not plan to go kill people. God, you know, if I'm lying, take care of me. You know what to do. So, don't say, well, we need somebody to beat you. I, I have gone to, to defend Doki Dam in, 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 in Nima County. Because they were arrested and in jail. I met Balazet there. And he housed me. He fed me at his table. So when I got there and he said they needed a chief justice, they needed a countryman chief justice. Yeah, I agree with that. Because everybody who was chief justice were out of Grimes, Shannon, everybody. You know, we needed a Balazé to be chief justice. And I championed that. So I went way to Nima looking for a lawyer. I put his name on the list and he made Balazé chief justice. Even though when I left the chief justice here and he put Balazé there, he wanted to take my Mercedes. I told him, no. <laughs> no, but I said, you know how you got to that place and I mean, go call some people to bring you? Eh? You should be telling though you can't take the car from me. Eh? So he sent there and sent there. I went, took my car and carried my pickup to the they are Alliance Moto people, Mr. Hada, his father. That, uh, that was a small boy that time. Then I said, Mr. Hada, I brought my pickup. Here is the car you gave me. I told Hada that we need a reputable car for the minute for the chief justice and there were no vehicles. Don't agree for us to buy the cars. So I ordered so many Jeeps and you see then the rich today. I ordered so many Mercedes, all the government ministers, the judiciary, all the judges got car. They came from me. Judges ought not to stand in the street corner looking for taxi like us, the common people. They are people on a pedestal and they should live like that. So I gave my judges the cars. But those cars never came when I left the ministry or the, 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 the Supreme Court. Mr. Haddad told me that how I got the Mercedes. Mr. Chibu was, I don't have any good Mercedes here, but I will let you use my Mercedes until I send for your own. The car that I ordered when I was Chief Justice did not come and I left. So I was using the car for Haddad. So what I do when Balazel was asking for it, I just put light there, took it back to Hada. I said, I brought my paper. Here is your car. He said, no, Mr. Chipo. I will go tell Doe that I gave you the car. That's how I got my, my car. I didn't get it by hook and crook. Or I didn't use power to take car from somebody. For your former chief judge to be telling me I'm going to bring a car. I didn't give it to him. Because it was not his. It was mine. That is the kind of man I am. And so, my fellow citizens, I know you suffer long during the conflict for change. People go and fight civil wars, and good people die. People are going to tension perish in those civil wars. We are not the first nation to suffer like this. But this is in the cause of nation building. Nation building tarried more than a thousand years. But I leave with you my best wishes as you go along. You don't need to put me in your modern government. I have already been there. When Liberia wanted to do something, they will look for Councillor Chipo. I'm not boasting. I was laying in my house and PRC sent me document. I could be raised, you know, let's call somebody else. The only thing I have problem with the PRC, they didn't know I respect my name. And so I was going to write them back and tell them, I'm not coming there until you learn to spell my name. How you will write history, you can't spell. So my Muslim told me, no, no. People will not compare to know how to write your name. 
And my Muslim lady, the woman who can challenge me. She disabused me of my all, all my phalanges and my tripping here. He said, no, it wasn't, but that name, that country name, said, you're not supposed to spell it. They can spell it country way. So you don't need to write them. Go ahead, write your report, but don't put that. I was going to write your letter. And until PRC, TRC learned to spell my proper name as a former official, former chief justice, former senator, former minister of justice here, I ain't coming there. My wife said, no. So I came here. I will be here. When you want to do anything in the country, church people will be here. Me, I know you will include me. And the president there now, when, he, when she got elected, before she got inaugurated, or she sent for me. She the one told me, I'm, I got a house in America. She told me, don't leave the country. You yeah, not leave the country the way you did when Taylor, Taylor took over. So I know, me, I know president here. The people who, uh, who I know very well say, your friend, your friend will ask for you. I don't go to the mansion. I'm too old now to be following children going to the mansion. What are I looking for? What are I looking for? I can feed myself. Yeah, I'm not rich. I didn't get money from government because I was strict. But one thing I tell y'all, y'all who come from government, you need to, uh, government to have a system of retirement. You have made laws, very, very good laws, but you don't have pr preparation for people who serve you when they retire. You don't take care of them. So they steal from you. That's why you're crying for corruption. When you leave government, you are forgotten. Just like they put you in the grave, put the mud there, you can't talk, you can't hear anything, so they don't even got to worry about you. Once you're out of that office, Labron people finish with you. The government finish with you. Despite you serve them well. You need to put down, TRC, one of your recommendations to do is for the Labron government to put in place a, an honorable retirement for government officials. For public servants, you say you don't want corruption, people may not steal your money. Then you must make it clear that, look, there's money here for something else. But when you are leaving, I will fill your pocket. I will provide for you. When people know that, they will stop corruption. But talking on the radio, disabusing people publicly, that will not stop them from stealing. Because when you leave government, they forget about you. Church people in this town, when they, the new government, even though the president called me, what she got inaugurated, I mean, got in office to talk with me, ta ta ta. Eating President Johnson, you don't know how somebody she will call me. No, she was calling a church people. She know how I stand. But when they're having their, their luncheon and all their, their celebration, and they don't call people. They call different people. Different people who don't have the class, who have not built a, 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 a reputation in the country. When you out, you out. When you in, you in. So fill your pocket when you leave. When they don't call you, you all right. <laughs> so I'm asking. Let me your ears, ladies and gentlemen. Please let me your ears. I have not talked for a long time. I know that. TRC tired hearing me, but when I, that's why I don't talk. When I start talking, I talk until I'm exhausted, until I, I close the point. The point had to be closed legally and prospectively, according to the agenda. The agenda here, I'm accused of being one of those who killed my fellow Liberians. Yeah, you're not, there's not an indictment, but I know how it goes. I am a prosecutor myself. That are, those are singular, profound charges on my reputation and those of my people after me. I have to exhaust myself so that when you go and sit down, after reading my note, you will reflect upon all that I have said here. That will give you approbation. Whether or not I'm a criminal, a murderer, or I'm just a citizen who speaks my mind. That's why I'm talking long. I've never had the opportunity for a long time, so bear with me. Now, I come back to say this. Let us put, I see in your document, uh, whether there will be trial, whether the, me, I know, no, your, your cook can't even convey me, I ain't even worried about that. Because you ain't got evidence where people plan to do anything, none of my people. 
I see them playing on So y'all go set up, yeah, uh, y'all set up, uh, what it in there, uh, uh, war crime tribunal. Y'all better make me judge because you will now find me guilty. <laughs> so I'm not afraid of that. You got no evidence. I was behind bars when the coup occurred. I was in my office. I heard the execution on the radio. Now I see people make cassette during the election. Uh, where you saw me talking. Well, you have a people, a military junta. They went in their council and they made a decision and wrote a decree. And according to their approbation, the crime that you're now talking about was equivalent to the penalty of death. Now they have exercised and enforced their judgment. What is it that I have to do with it? You look for it. Talk on a video, you see people talking. I still believe that today. And I mean, I see people, people who used to go behind the PRC, tell the soldier all kinds of things. They and all will be in a video. If I was a, a terrible man like people think I am, I will go and make a video too. I will go and make a video and tell people what they did, what I saw. I know their record when I was Minister of Justice. I know what they did. I know how they acquired their properties. I know people who stole government money. I will talk it. <laughs> but I don't want to do it. No, I'm not disposed to doing that. That's not the issue. The issue here is whether or not the People Progressive Party's leadership and members participated in the horrible occasion that took place during our time. I said no. I provided all the evidence. I provided in instances. I told you uh, the conditions and everything. You have to go and make judgment for yourself. Certainly, God knows. The PPP did not plan to overthrow any government. Neither did we plan to execute us. Ache Chipo did not kill my foster father. God knows that. My foster father did not hate me. He always sent people in the jail to ask about me. And he put it in that way just for the soldier not to know that he had dealing with me. So I could not have gone to plan to keep up at Jason. He did not do Jason helped me to be where I am. He fed me. He clothed me. He advised me. I got to be a lawyer. I wanted to be like Jason, a strong, dynamic lawyer. Do you know Jason was not a lawyer? But when crisis came in the country, Toba put him back as Minister of Justice. I learned that austereness, forthrightness, transparency. I learned it from Chess to be a modern man. God knows his death. I have no part in it. If I don't have any part in it, God knows he will bless me. If I have part in it, my judgment should be that I'm not see God's face. This is my prayer to you. I thank you. I hope I didn't take too long. A lawyer got long with the case, uh, you know, utterances. When we go before the Supreme Court, we cite law, we read law, we go a long time because when I close my case, I want you to have all the information necessary and have all of the law involved before you. Then you can make a sane, wise, and justiciable decision. That's why I took so long to make my dispose, to present, to submit to you my presentation. I want you to go to your homes, those of you who are sitting in the audience. When you see them called Chipo, also queer, back on mafia and others, to talk about the atrocity that took place in our country. You must remember, this country will call you if you got in the same circumstances that I'm in today, or that I was in. So as you go, make sure in your life not to do things that will implicate you. Maybe this was our mistake. Maybe as a lawyer, I didn't have time. I should not have had time to go to a group. Uh, all my friends in my work, I have a higher position than all of them. I didn't have to come down to them. I should have gone. One man told me, you didn't have approbation in prison. You should have gone to Pete through your party 
and show penitent, you'll be back in office. You're the educated people. Then you come here joining the children or in the street. Well, I didn't think it was not all about me getting a good job or getting a good place in the society. It was about the society creating a condition for all citizens to have a good place in it. And that's what I work for. If you say, because I was in it, all the wrong that took place, I'm part of it. Yes, I was there. I was there. But the thing I did was not to murder people. I wanted another party in this country, and I did form one. And I made sure that the motor party system here. And I will pray to God when I leave and be here. But I did not murder people in the process. I did not plan. I did not execute. I did not lay in wait. I did not suggest to anyone to have a coup and kill a sitting president and other official and go and execute them. As you all know, look at your video that is now circulating. The court martial bow of the Republic of Liberia, of the Armed Forces of Liberia. There is a commercial bow. This is not something that somebody just come. And you remember, those of you who are older people than me, there was a time before when all these things were going on, I think the true party sensed that there would have been a problem. So he put all the big, Richard Henry was the major general in the army. He inducted all the true party officials into the Liberian Armed Forces. I remember very well that Richard Henry, the speaker, he was made major general. Uh, this man who got the estate now, who was true party chairman, Goodrich was major general. The vice president was, was, was made general. Some were made general, some were made major general, lieutenant general. They were all in the army. So when the coup occurred, the soldiers say they were military people. And they made the decision in the army. The people of the Redemption Council did not tell the same way from the beginning they told us, put Doe as chairman of People Redemption Council. Put this person as speaker. Put the other person as secretary general. They told us what to do. And after a while, when the struggle got tough, they put all of us in the army. All the ministers were made. Me and Major in the army. I, I have not retired. And I'm not communicating with me, but I'm still a soldier. <laughs> so somebody told me, I heard that in, in Vangima recently, that some of the people went and got their money when they were dividing money to the AFL. I said, oh, I didn't know that. So the next time they do it, I'll go get my money. <laughs> because I'm still a major in the Army. I'm not retired. I have no communication. So for all the time I was sitting down, I'm a sitting major. I need to get my money. <laughs> for the police, I'm lieutenant general of the Liberia National Police. I still got my badges, I got my uniform in America, and I got my documents. So when policemen arrest me for my old picker, the, the, the other day I will come and say, my man, you don't buy a license. So, so then why you don't get a license? I said, my man, you know what you did just now? He said, no. I said, you arrested the former minister of justice. He said, eh? Oh man, go, yeah? You change people? I said, yeah. I said, go. <laughs> That's how I live in here. Policemen can't arrest me. They can't do anything. Even when I go to court, judge will stand up. Chief, hello. All oh, the workers in justice. Now, chief, send you left high in this place here. The people know me all around. I will be here for a long time with you. I wish you well, Liberians. We wanted your country to be a good country, a democratic country. Let us love one another. You should begin to be marrying American Liberian girls. American Liberians, don't take native girl just as your girlfriend to bond something they call us our children. Marry them too. Let us integrate. Be proud to take out a native woman's daughter and marry her and educate her and go out proudly in your churches and let people see that she is your daughter. That will help to integrate us. Not to just use them behind in private rooms and having children. No. And don't be afraid of the American Liberians. The American Liberian girls are the sweetest in this country. Yes. 
They will talk to you. They will talk fine English to you. They will talk to you nicely. They will treat you better. They will feed you. All the American Liberian girls that I know, they will feed you. They, will, they know how to bake. They know how to cook. They, know, they, they can take care of men very good. I saw it in my father's house. Mommy used to go in the kitchen. She, we got a, they, they had cook, one by some men. But this woman, on Sunday, or on good day that she's not too busy, she was a lawyer for Lamco. She would go down there in the kitchen and order the cooking. And one day, mommy in our kitchen, the food will be sweet. They know how to cook. They will civilize your children because they come from a civilized, prolonged civilized background. But I'm just thinking, socially, that will unite us. There won't be another coup. It won't be the Chipo against the Toba or the queer against the Dennis's. No. If you have Dennis' daughter to be the mother of your children, certainly you're not going to be a friend. The Dennis would dare do nothing that will, about, that, will harm, that will harm you. We will be safe. So let us integrate and let us work together. And government, you don't want your people to continue stealing. You have to put measure on the ground that will stop them from stealing, not by prosecution. Because if people retire, your gov you government, you don't, you don't do anything for them. You abandon them. People got to raise money for former ministers who died to go bury them. Then you have a burial for honorable people who died, for senators, for representatives. Not to go borrow money before you came into the capital. No. I should have a burial form. You should have a burial form to do that. So prepare for your people that are serving you. So that when they leave, they will not be ashamed. They will not be looking like nothing. Then the people will say, okay, this man is not a good man. The system is not good. Unless you do something for yourself, they will not care for you. So care for your retired people. Fight for them. Protect them. Make them be happy for being with you and serving you. I leave with you again, good wishes. You say you have a glorious land of liberty in your law, but you have not lived here as people in a glorious, glorious land of liberty. You have not done that. You still fight among yourselves. You still pick and choose. I see you worrying about the new government going to America and bringing Liberians to work. I don't see anything wrong with that. This woman looking for professional, experienced people in a conflict rating society, in a corrupt society where government officials are known for stealing government money and not doing anything. She wanted to make a difference. She wants to make a difference. So she's going around bringing people that she thinks will help us achieve her aim. Yes, those of us who suffer in the war, we were here. And we think that those positions, those flashy cars, we should be the one riding those cars because we survived the war. Well, that's not a way to build Liberia. When we say the conflict is over and we cook the food, it's in a dish, all members of the family are supposed to put their hand in there. There are no selective citizens better than the others. We are all citizens. Even if you run away were in America for your life, now that the Peace has arrived in our, our country. You have a right to come here and take part. And if the sitting government feels that you can do better, they should give you that position. I don't envy them. So I don't want you to talk about it. Those of you who want government position, the way to get it is to go back to school. When I left the village, I went to school. That's why you hear the church people. If I didn't have anything to do in the community, nobody would hear my name. So I challenge you. Fight for education. Fight for the right. And abolish corruption. Don't connive with people to steal. Our Bible says thou shalt not steal. But stealing has paralyzed the development of our country. One of the reasons, new parties, that we decided to have another party, the true party has led this country for 100 years. There are no roads, as I think I alluded to it earlier. No good bridges. No cities, no airports, our seaports, our educational institutions 
they are not on standard internationally. We've been here over 100 years. We don't have standardized in institutional uh, uh, centers. Either they are non-existent or they are decadent and understandable. You have a country that you call the glorious land of liberty. Why don't you make it glorious in its performance, in the dealing with its citizens, in giving rights and teaching our opportunity? Make it glorious. You have the power to do it. You have the ability. You got the resources. And I don't like the whole thing about you talking about foreign investors to come. What time you will get up to organize company and find money in the international community to come develop your country. Everybody looking for something they call international investors. Investors. No! Why you can't look for national investors? Yet our banks are all here. Make contact with your government to open credit system for you. So you yourself can develop your country the way you want. You can build your companies and make money. So we're not looking from now on, yes. Uh, so now, uh, I'm going too far. I thought this thing was working. That's why I'm holding the mouth. Thank you. But uh, the thing I'm saying is that I'm pointing out the root causes of the hunger, the inability to buy rice. We had a rice riot in which so many people die. But still, after the war, we still have the increased price of rice. Rice is an issue. Why don't you get up and go and, and produce rice? We need some citizens that will say, well, for me, then the rice is a very good commodity here. I will go, and then I will, uh, I will make farm. I will produce rice. No, all of all want to be in Moravia. We all want to be lawyers and reverend. Well, reverend got to eat after preaching. So you have the right to develop your country. Yeah, not international investor can come, but you too should be an investor in your own country. Sorry, if I'm very windy and long speaking, but you call me here to tell you what I know about this world. And so, in my own view. I think I have told you. I thank you for the time, your patience, and for everything. The only thing I need right now, really, I need a cold bottle of water. Thank you very much. Yeah, please. Mm -hmm. The man talks for Yeah, he got to sit down.